Uh, well, so CMS capital warrant article. I don't know how much more there is oh, sure. <laughs> to oh, talk right. about. Sorry. Sorry. At least everybody yeah, here yeah. the uh, I was not ready. Um, um, and we've had a few more info sessions. You've been to the league. You want to? Yes, let's any, see. Any summary of what people have been up to? Uh, let's see. We've had a lot more info sessions. I feel like almost every day or something. Um, but we've had at least a couple a week. I will say, interestingly enough, although we figured there'd be lots more people closer to town meeting, I think so many people came out early on. Um, it's been less. The attendance has been less in the past week or so. Um, mm -hmm. But at the same time, those who come are very engaged and very thankful that we're doing this. We've heard nothing but thanks um, for all of the outreach we're doing. Several people have said, wow, you're really going above and beyond. This is amazing. Um, at the tours this past weekend, I, I, I was the one on the tours this weekend. We had a few people at Sanborn, and then a whole slew joined at Peabody. Um, in fact, the ones at Sanborn were so quick that we went through Sanborn and Peabody. And then it was 11 o'clock and another whole group showed up, so I did Peabody again. Um, but it was a, both were very engaged groups who asked great questions. Um, you know, there have been, I think we've been collecting some more feedback throughout. As we all talked about, we didn't want to keep changing our slides and, and, and presentation, but I think they'll be really informative as we try to just hone down all that, that that we have to tell our story for a much smaller presentation for town meeting. Um, and I've actually been, Joanne and I collected some yesterday, I've been putting down some notes on what are the big points that people really want to hear about so we can really hone down what we want to say at town meeting. Um, that, that's kind of the high level stuff. Is there anything particular that um, we want to hear about? I'll share, you, share with you what I've picked up um, on more than one occasion, and that is that there's a, a hope on the part of uh, more than a few people that the building committee, when it's established, uh, is prepared to think quite boldly. Um, uh, the, the, the cynical way, uh, uh, statement I heard was, uh, are we going to build another 50-year building in this town? Uh, and that led to another conversation of, no, what would a, uh, a really uh, robust building uh, built for the future look like? Um, Concord does have a proud history of doing things our way and, and uniquely. Could we set the bar very high for not only a facility, but also for the educational uh, capacity of that facility? And to that point, um, in the presentations I've done, I've taken that one slide about educational programming that could be had in a new building and tried to make three slides worth of conversation about it because I, I think that's the one place where we're maybe giving an important topic short shrift is mm -hmm. the question, what will a new building enable in terms of learning, uh, teaching and learning for today and tomorrow? Mm -hmm. It is a bigger conversation we have than we have. Right. Um, and, uh, and it's an exciting conversation. Right. Is, is it one where anybody can see with perfect clarity what uh, we're going to do in the way of teaching and learning and uh, the best environments 20 years from now? No, no. Uh, but that leads to another conversation of uh, just how adaptable will this building be to uh, meet some of the unknowns. So uh, in short, uh, the hope is the building <coughs> will be not timid but quite bold uh -huh. about uh, what would be best for concrete. Absolutely. Um, in fact, your notes kind of bring, or go ahead, did you have a comment? Yeah, we've got some topics to bring to you. I don't know if you want me to hop in when they seem to fit where the conversation goes, or if you yeah, want to make them as Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, so Jared's going to hand out um, <coughs> both the building committee charge, and we had left the select board with the request that we put the verbal comments that we shared with them to paper, but I also think we need to have a discussion in public on the select, the charge draft. Yes. And so that, have that, that should have been part of my update. The select board <laughs> voted unanimously uh, to, to uh, recommend affirmative action on this article, which is great as well. Really great news. I would also, as you're passing that out, I, I'd like to truly thank all of the members of the select board because in the 
days, weeks, and especially days leading up to their meeting where they took that vote. Um, I, I know a lot of them spent significant time with several of us really having in-depth conversation um, and asking great questions to really understand the details of this article and the why and the how and the ramifications. Um, and because I know it's a big question and I really appreciated that they all took the time to really understand the yes. details before making that vote. Mm -hmm. yes. um, so it was, it, it was great to see and much appreciated. So thank you to the select yes. <laughs> So we've been through the charge several times over and feel really good about a lot of it. Um, and so we're really here to let you have a conversation. <coughs> What's in Jared's memo? After I stop him from running around the room, he's going to share what we put together based on the anecdotal feedback we had. So we received <clears throat> a lot of feedback um, on the first draft of the uh, building committee charge. So there's four things that we're highlighting that we're recommending the, the, uh, the school committee address with the Concord Select Board. First one would be uh, one more voting school committee member. Another would be an addition of a, a parent um, of a Concord uh, Public School student. Which could be one of the community members. Mm -hmm. We'd like to see, this came from Walling, I think. So we've just been collecting. We don't own any of these for, as original ideas. Right. Uh, the second would be, uh, I'm going to read it and then explain it. Uh, the Concord uh, Middle School Building Committee should be charged with assessing the owner's uh, project manager and design work through the feasibility study and the schematic design. If a full building project is approved, the, school, uh, the Concord Middle School Building Committee should determine if the OPM and designer contracts will be ex uh, extended. If the building committee recommends going back out for the selection of either role, it should have the authority to do so. So we've done additional research um, and made some follow-up calls on mm -hmm. this process. We are allowed to keep um, the OPM throughout the, the process. So the, the, the committee here would be in charge of um, moving that person, continuing uh, business with that person. And you're saying it's legal? Why would it not be legal? I mean, I don't... Uh, it, we, we at one point we potentially thought you would have to bid that back out because okay. you're doing this feasibility the schematic design mm -hmm. waiting for the funding if approved and then um, oh I see yeah, yeah. So the no public right. bidding the second round because right. the initial right. public, the public bid is only for right. that short yeah. term oh, okay. so we really yeah. tried to do some yeah. homework on yeah. right. I'm so making sure that was the right is this purchasing law also? Correct. So yeah. the MSBA process, I thought, was actually a little teeny bit different. MSBA process, you really hire the OPM and have them throughout. I thought going out on our own, potentially, you would have to, uh, you couldn't, you'd have to bid that back up. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, it doesn't really make too much sense. Mm -hmm. You have to put that into the, the bid in the beginning, that that's a, uh, the potential. A potential. Some, uh, so the runway on is that. there for that to happen. Yeah, you would okay. make that, yeah. And it's pretty common that the same OPM continues through. It's yes. not like it's yes. no. a thing to do. Right? But, but in all MSBA, pretty much, going out on your own is a little bit different because it's a little less common. Right. Um, but, yeah. but the building committee has total authority over who the OPM is going to be in the, Correct. In the building of the school, right? Yeah. 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 Right. So well, and they, it, it was built the way it was written. It was they had authority authority at the beginning. <coughs> what Jared is suggesting adding is confirming that, that it's then their decision to decide did they do a good job for us and do we want to continue. So I, okay. I like yeah. that addition. I think that's yeah. important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. And then the last one is um, the the committee is should be charged. Um, with recommending the preferred construction delivery uh, methodology. So you would either do a design uh, bid build, which is sort of um, lowest bid, um, or the, the CM at risk, um, which is more of a, you, you have that person on in the beginning, and it's, it, if that person is through with you through the entire design phase. So there's pros and cons to both. Uh, I can go through those if interested, but... Um. So is this language anywhere in the Willard School 
building committee it charge? Is, it is <coughs> not. The, 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 yeah. There's reference to the construction reform at the end, but nothing this, neither of these are there. Yeah. Uh, I'll confess, I need you to take me through it again. Sure. Um, and I'm going to have some, add it up, um, a couple of things to. He's ready because I look at him and go, "What does that mean?" Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I meant to say. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, design, bid, build. I'm going to give you some pros and cons. So, the design changes. If, so, this is for the uh, design, bid, build. Design changes easily accommodated prior to the start of construction. These are all pros. Design is complete prior to construction award. Construction cost is fixed at a contract uh, award. Low bid cost, maximum competition, uh, relative ease of uh, implementation, um, and then using pre-qualification process limits poor contractors from bidding. Some cons, um, no contractor input in design. So that's big, planning or engineering. So you would, they wouldn't be, the design happens before. Um, the owner has little to no say in the selection of the individuals who will supervise the project. It's a little bit. Um, design and construction is sequential. Limited ability for early work packages. Construction costs unknown until contract award. Uh, um, and um, so those are, those are some of the, the cons to the mm -hmm. design bid build. Now for the, the CM at risk, uh, which stands for uh, construction manager at risk, um, the ability to pre-qualify and select a CM in the team of individuals who will be part of the team. Um, the CM participates in the subcontracted pre-qualification uh, pre pre process. The CM will review uh, the plans and limit drawing specification inconsistencies. Uh, better cost control through the CM ownership of the construction project. Ability to fast track. Um, is a big one. You can uh, make, uh, start the construction project before design completion, reducing project schedule. Um, what else are some good ones? Um, and then the CM will provide assistance with the project phasing and logistics. Some of the cons, um, which isn't a huge con, but uh, approval required by the um, Office of the Inspector General it takes 30 to 45 days. Um, because it changes up normal purchasing. Right. And having a CM also increases costs a little bit, about 2 to 3%. So that's, that's one thing um, that's, that's a big con. Um, but in the CM, the CM has little risk, little real risk, so because they're, they're, they're not providing the deliverable. Um, the, um, when you're doing the design bid build, they own that. They're the low bidder. So is CM at risk sort of a misnomer then? Because it's sort of a new thing that the it's sort of the new way of doing it. A lot of building projects now are doing the CM at risk. They're more of a partner to you. They're there from the beginning. So a couple of questions. Sure. One, you said it could cost more, you said cost could be higher. But you also said in the process that you can save, cotton. I think, on something. I thought you said, I said cost, better but cost control. Better cost control and time that you could shorten the time frame. <coughs> right. Which so you can make that like 2 to 3% up. Um, okay. That's where I was going for that. Do right. those two balance each other they out? They could, absolutely. One, because you could start sooner, right? Uh, therefore saving money. Um, in the process would you could save money because it'd be a quicker process potentially. Okay. And second. That was my second question. Sure. Go ahead. Someone else can go, and then I'll Do, come back. Does that obligate the building committee to be even savvier if it uh, with the CM at risk because oh. they could accelerate schedule and so on? So it puts a little more onus on them. Correct. Okay. Okay. My second question. Yeah. Um, Coming back to you, you said this is a relatively newer structure. Is there a trend? Are most MSBA funded projects using that? Are independently funded projects doing this? Okay. What's, the, what's the overall outlook? I know that I, 
I don't know for a fact, but I, I'm pretty sure that a lot of the new projects are going seem at risk. When I was talking to even business managers today, getting even some of this information, um, current projects are they're doing the seam at risk, and they all said get the, get him get that person aboard as quickly as possible, um, because the sooner you get that person aboard, you can get started instead of going through um, the whole you know um, low bid process and bidding everything out, and not having them as a partner. Is there any way to talk to people or districts who are using a CMS yep. at risk oh, yeah. to see if they feel like by the end any any increased cost <coughs> was made up? Because so I feel like, yep. at least for my like quick assessment of all your pros and cons, I felt like, Country well, that's clear cost. until the potential right. increased cost. That seems like yep. the, really only the con to me. Right. So the question would be, would that be made up by some of the other advantages? Right. So does this, um, this, the, I'm trying to get at the process of these recommendations basically would be recommendations we would make to the select board on the charge. Correct. And do we, do we make that recommendation about how to bid it out? No, this, that's 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 no, this is asking the building committee to make that charge that they, right. It's up to them to have the... So the we're not deciding. We're not we're deciding. Saying, here are the two methods of how. Got it. Yeah. Just to clearly make sure the charge understand. indicates the committee's going to choose between Got those. Yes. Right. Got it. So that it's clear now. Yeah. Which they would anyway, but it's clearer in the heading right. in the charge. Right. So, so, so yeah, wait, can you wait one sec? Till yeah. the, uh, I just want to make sure everyone gets your questions answered. The um, the um, recommendations are what we would this would be the next step in the process of, to the select board or the town manager. So everything that's here is what I verbally said to them oh, okay. Monday night, and the request was could we put our suggestions in writing. Got I did think this committee needed to talk on whether there were any other mm -hmm. suggestions mm -hmm. they wanted to offer for feedback, given that we have really a nicely timed mm -hmm. meeting tonight before they look at it again. Yeah, there's one other I would mention um, that I still had and mentioned that night, so they might have it, but. We've been talking about the fact that this feasibility and design phase is the platform for some really important public input, and that that mm -hmm. would happen as part of this process, and that the building committee would manage that. So I think it would be important for the charge to include that as one of the responsibilities, to kind of manage a process of public input. Mm -hmm. on you know, on basically public input on design. So, so just on the CM at risk, the high school did use it. And the MSBA oh, okay. issued points. Do you want to, so just I think for the record, yeah, public state. comment, because <laughs> you're about to sit up here <laughs> next time. So Cynthia Rainey, Hunters Ridge Road. So the high school project did use it, and you might want to talk to somebody on the building committee. I think they thought it was a very valuable thing and was a big part of the <laughs> yeah, That would be me. Yeah. <laughs> and the MSBA gives you points, I believe, to encourage you to use the CM at risk. So it's, you know, I think it's a really good thing to do. So you might just want to try to include that information so that it sort of floats forward to the building committee. Was there ever any discussion that it would cost two to three percent more? I think the whole discussion I remember is that it was ultimately such a safeguard yeah. that yeah. the, the okay. little bit, yeah. we all have a little yeah. bit of horror stories. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You get what you pay for sometimes. So that's, yeah. So that's, the choice almost seems like it's, yeah, it's pretty clear from the beginning almost. Yeah, I'd actually be but, curious how many buildings are actually going with especially the MSB is yeah. recommending yeah. now that there's an option. option. Yeah. yeah. Is there any discussion about other five community residents in large will be? Um, not that I've heard. No, we didn't have that was a talk about at last week's meeting. And they said something about will be adjusted, but that's good to bring it up. I mean, presumably they have some knowledge of some element of the hmm. process or parent or, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lots of very qualified people around us. just pointed yeah. out something yeah. that yeah. I think we brought up before, and there might have been an answer to it. But I, I'm looking at uh, pages two and three where powers and duties uh, uh, 
uh, sequence from design to feasibility to design construction. Is that indeed accurate or is feasibility what precedes design? design. Where is that? I feel like well, the order of powers and duties. These are sort of backwards and powers and duties. Yeah. Looks backwards to me. During the feasibility, should be during the feasibility study phase and then during the design phase. In that order rather than. Mm -hmm. Just to clarify too, I don't know if I mm -hmm. said this. The two to three percent is because it's it's pre-construction that this person would be on. So you're paying for the pre-construction costs. Okay, so you're just you're paying for extra time, like more of their hours, basically. Got it. And in terms of uh, the charge, what do we think we know about the select board's timetable for adoption of this? Well, we're going to meet with them on Monday. Right. It does have Willard in a couple of places. Yeah, I yeah. assumed they would they correct that, that yeah. on their own. Yeah. And, and Chris, Chris acknowledged you left it that way on purpose. Yeah, so. okay. It seems like it was changed. Sounds like. Should the, the under elected officials and appointed committees, um, the second item, should there be a more expansive list than on items such as the technology plan. Where are you all? Page, Page five. five. First section. Second bullet. I mean, I, I, there are you know, sort of so many things that are going to have a perpetual ongoing effect the building and the operation and the expenses that we'll be responsible for, should that be a little more expansive than just technology plan? And should that, you know, I don't know how that budget gets established, but is there any request to the school committee to, you know, give some input on yeah, I think it would be quite what they a good. Would, what the committee would think of as necessary pieces. I don't know. I'm just you know I'm not trying to overstep the. Well, you're, you're, you're making a case. Just, you're making a case for more information. Uh, and, uh, and things yeah, that more, have significant implications for the ongoing operation of a school. I'm also a little bit baffled by what confirming a recommendation means. What does it mean to confirm a recommendation? I think what uh, you want is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, more built-in two-way communication about uh, uh, feasibility and design and construction and us readying ourselves for all the educational implications and operational implications. Yeah. You can't do that with a quarterly meeting and give the school committee the, or the administration a level of knowledge it's going to need. Or give the building committee the level of Understanding of yeah. expectation. Yeah. Um, I wonder if we take that second bullet and, uh, to your point, while they expand it and clarify it, ask for more on both sides, the building committee and school committee. I mean, ultimately, the authority remains with the building committee, but more, you know, there's nothing wrong with more information and more and more back and forth dialogue. Yeah, I don't that's think. true. Back and forth I don't know how that hurts anybody. Right. I mean, can you? Um, as long as we don't make it onerous. On the <coughs> right. Right. That, you know, every time they have a meeting, they have to come talk to us. It's not that. That's not it's the just, idea. No. It doesn't um, change, and it doesn't change accountabilities. We want to say on a monthly basis. I mean, I think, you know, the, there, there's embedded communication, too, with me there and one of you there, at least. He's one or not two. Nothing's going to happen without us being very aware and part of the discussion. Just stating the obvious, probably. But. Yeah. 
Right. It's not like you're dependent on those quarterly meetings as your only source of information. Right. And if we have input, we can give it through mm -hmm. the members. Absolutely. I would definitely like to see one more member of the school committee. Um, and uh, I think identifying the, you know, one of the five community members of March, I'd say at least one, one would be the uh, parent of the current public school child. That makes sense. Um, another thought that just came up actually based on conversation with Dom, the arch school architect who's on our committee also, um, she was just mentioning the other day how the feasibility study and schematic design are often bid and contracted together as a package. Um, so this is broken out, of, to your point, the ordering I think needs to be adjusted. But even so, as a feasibility study and design, each one has a process for a selection. I just want to make sure that we're not excluding the possibility of bidding and contracting those together. Does this exclude that? I don't know, Jared. Does no. It? Okay. No. Okay. I just want to make sure that, was, that we don't design it out by the state. Other suggestions or thoughts? Does there need to be a some sort of an indicated role for our finance director in this? Yeah, I was wondering. Oh yeah, we asked about that. We did ask you about that. Um, so I think we got an answer already. Actually, if it doesn't <laughs> sound like it would. We could propose it again. The original question was whether could, Jared could be a voting member. Oh, yeah. um, that discussion didn't give us an affirmative, so mm -hmm. it's certainly, at least ex officio, you, I want him in the room, so yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So we could request participation. Yeah. Yeah. I think we should. Mm -hmm. It's the most knowledgeable. Well, yeah, I think it's right our money than, guy. We're spending a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you can go because there. these are public meetings. But I think being an ex officio member, yeah, no, I think to be more than just a public member, more than just an observer, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. more than yeah. an observer, certainly. I mean, we had actually had a little side conversation between the two of us whether his we would consider trading the facilities manager vote for his if we're willing to do it. <laughs> <So>. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, if the concern was not to add more votes, but right. to us, would he be the better vote just because he's got a bigger picture view than right. the facilities mm -hmm. manager? Right. I would say yes, unless okay. there was, yeah. and, and that, I think that Brian still be. We'd still want Brian. Issue. Then maybe we have Brian there as the ex Right, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think that mm -hmm. yeah. makes more sense. He just has the bigger picture. Well, if you have to, if we're, if you can't have finding a middle. <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, presumably, these, at least my experience was, the the committee, the building committee, agreed on the next steps and took the votes. I mean, you did. Yeah. I don't remember a contest no. or contentious vote on the committee. Probably right. not. Though. So. <laughs> For a public comment? Sure. Is that a full stock member reach? Yeah, it's working. The membership in operation of the five community residents, large speaking about community members should bring as many as the following uh, construction, AV, AVC, architecture, financial, recreation. This is a long process that we have to all the time follow lots of contractual obligations, maybe the wording might want to include legal knowledge in one of the I'm sorry, where, where were you reading from? Page yeah. one. Second yeah. paragraph. Speaking about 
the community members, oh, the five okay. community Thank residents, you. After the list. Yep. one of them with legal knowledge mm -hmm. might be as important as HVAC. Mm -hmm. It might be a, an idea for legal expertise. Yeah. Is there, is anybody hired in this process who represents us legally, from a legal standpoint? Um, the OPM better know their legal yeah. standpoint. <laughs> <laughs> That's who you rely on. Yeah. So the, the, first thing, the, the first role of this committee would be to hire the OPM. And it's their responsibility. They run the project, they know. Uh, advise us of yes. procurement, yeah, everything. Every, everything. everything. They're yeah, the they really CPO of this. Yeah. So I think, I think the point is spot on. I think we might have it covered knowing there's a form of a professional OPM yeah. going to be leading them. Yeah. I think project. there's so many important pieces of input necessary here and expertise beyond the legal stuff that, you know, Given the size of the building committee, I would probably stick to what's what's here. You know, because a part of the charge here is that uh, the middle school building committee shall keep abreast of any potential reform to construction laws at the state level. I mean, we both have council. We have council. With for the committee, school committee and the town house council. Um, so I'm sure that you know, if there are things that the building committee is concerned about, they could ask the town manager to provide some time from either town council or to us for some from Well, the, again, the OPM is the one that really should keep us out of any hot water yeah. going in the wrong direction. They usually lead us. And we've grown okay. quite comfortable calling the IG's office directly. <laughs> right. Yes. Sure we right them. Them. So, um, I think that's pretty good in terms of our feedback okay. to them. Thank so I think that. the last question is who's sending the memo to the select board? Probably me. I think you. So we'll send you the electronic version. Yeah. So you can cut and paste into a memo. That'd be great. And you, okay. did you put the notes of the addition, anything? I have them there handwritten anything? here. We'll right, tweak we'll it and send it. it to you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. The one other thing we wanted to bring, because this kind of happened in between meetings, uh, is the revised motion language mm -hmm. that we worked on with Carmen, Town Council, Bond Council, made the full loop Council Almost council. twice, actually, because <laughs> we, our bond council helped us get what we were looking for. It went to Carmen, who went to town council, and then it went back to bond council. Yeah. But, so. So you have enough there. Yeah, probably that works. Yeah. Okay. So, um, would just be helpful to point out the change. Yeah, the the main two major changes. Know what we're voting on. Correct. Change. Yeah. Two changes. Um, none of which changes the scope of the article. I just want to clarify that everyone has agreed the article was fine the way it is um, because it covered the scope of the feasibility and schematic design and, and all of that. So the motion would now include uh, schematic design. You can see that language has been added in the fourth line down under the motion. Mm -hmm. And there's another tweak. This, we had so many versions. There's one other tweak that needs to get to this version that they've suggested that rather than conquer a middle school building committee, that it say under the town managers in consultation with the school committee. So I'm sorry, I don't have that language here. I thought this was a different version. We've had about five. Uh, okay. Because no Concord Middle School Building Committee exists right now. Yeah. So we can't have that in the motion. So we would clarify that it's under the town manager's direction in consultation with the school committee. 
And obviously we're going to have to talk on the fact that there's actually a building committee. That there will be a building to be committee created. In place. But without the building committee, town council felt very strongly it could not be the wording in the right. motion. And those are the two changes. Those are the two changes. I'll bring you a clean version when we meet right before town meeting, if you prefer. I thought I had it. Um, yeah, no, I think that would be good. Yeah. Can you send it to us? Well? Yeah, I'll email yeah. it to you. Yeah. That'd be great. I might have actually emailed you the right one and printed the wrong one. <laughs> in that case, are we okay with the building committee reference in the article itself? Yeah, let me check on that too, see if we need to check to change anything there. We've been very focused on the motion because there's a limited amount we can change in the article that's from our seats correct. prior to town meeting. Right. Yeah, so I'll go back and make sure I give you the correct version. But those were the two major discussion yeah. points. Mm -hmm. Great. Those make sense. So we can just take that up right before town meeting. So I think so, yeah. Good. And you know where it's going, so it won't, yeah. shouldn't be long. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Can we make that publicly available before we vote on it? Uh, I would think so. Okay. Maybe, maybe just put it on the website under CMS? Uh, I think you put it on an agenda. I wouldn't put it on the website. We haven't voted it. Yeah. I wouldn't have it on. If they want to click to a vote, you know, we could do our right. agenda for oh. that. I wouldn't have it on the agenda. Oh, for the agenda. Okay, so you, so that, that the public will only have a couple of days to look at it. Well, whenever we, we could. Oh, actually, we could, we could do, put it in we could earlier. Link it to this okay. agenda. Okay, that's that's. Yeah, fine. we could yeah. link it to this. It just agenda. Say, yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't think it should be on there. Yeah, that makes sense. Just. Yeah, no, all right. You could follow the agendas. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Just where they find it. Right. Yeah, because it's just it's what you meant to have. It is. So, yeah. Okay. Great. Linking it to this agenda and then. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. Um. Okay. Any other updates from you guys, Jared and Lori? Swimming in this stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Anything happened in the last couple hours? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, you know, we had an update on the updated on the finance committee meeting that was before the select board meeting. Have we? In this form, at least. I think everybody here knows, but uh, so we can yeah, officially no, yeah. update out on it. Feels like so. <laughs> that feels like ages ago. Yeah, well, he's looking at me like that was months ago. The finance committee meeting where they voted their recommendation on Article 14. Um, and they voted to recommend affirmative action in half the amount, so at 750,000 instead of 1.5 million. Um, we've talked about the fact that, well, I think they didn't have a clear enough understanding um, of the pieces of the 1.5 million and how they interplay and how they're <coughs> interdependent. Um, and we've talked about maybe trying to clarify that even sending them follow-up information so that they understand why we're still requesting the 1.5 and that really all of those pieces in the 1.5 million um, are integral to each other and it's, it's one overall ask that even the MSBA um, tends to bid and contract out altogether. So we might want to just clarify with them mm -hmm. and, um, and we keep moving forward with our Proposal. As well, it. and also the other thing it would do is delay it would, to break it up. Oh, definitely. We well, it's, either we don't get enough information, information or we delay a full year, yeah. which when comes you back look to our at cost, the of waiting. cost of waiting that we've built, that we've shown, right. and we've shown our justifications for those numbers. At the very least, a delay, even if we had to delay and wait for a uh, special town meeting. Um, and the work that would have to be done by the design team to then catch up, if that was even feasible, yeah. um, we're basically paying somewhere between one and a half to three million dollars for a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar option. Yep, exactly. Which is unheard of. Right, right. Which yeah. doesn't make great fiscal sense. No. Right. Not to mention even on on a smaller scale than that, but also relevant. If you split these up, you're not going to get as efficient pricing or bids on either of them because you split them up. So all around, it actually costs Concord more to split them up. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so we will try to at least communicate that back to the Finance Committee. They may or may not make any changes, but at the very least, we'll have kind of filled in the, the gaps of yeah, information. We, we should we're much deeper into this than the FinCom is. And right, and there's no reason. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So we'll try to fill that in. 
And you know, I, I was, was there a justification given of why that makes sense? Um, so they were kind of looking at each piece individually and thinking that we would do a feasibility study and then decide whether or not to do a schematic design. Um, and what we, we we really weren't part of the discussion, so we didn't have a chance to kind of oh, address that. I don't that know that's true. I was well, at the table. You were there at the table. For a long part of the well, discussion. Well, that's true. Um, we were trying to clarify. There's a lot of um, different different ideas at the table, which I think were very hard to keep on the facts, and I don't think that's anybody's fault. Some misperception of what the feasibility study was. Um, some comment on. I think trying to ensure the money is getting spent where it should be or and it's not being overspent. I think a lot of different things were coming to that decision. Um, and I, I felt like I could help them get the facts fast enough. I definitely, I was at the table two weeks in a row with them at their meeting trying to be sure we were communicating all the major complexities to all of this and it just was really hard in that amount of time. And, a lot of catch up to be made. I think on the positive, they could have just voted no action or worse, and they didn't. So, um, but I mean, it, it was the best decision they could make with what they had for their their facts. Right, and and clearly they did agree that we need to do something about the middle school, and that's why they were in agreement that they wanted to vote some type of affirmative action, or at least that the consensus among who is there is that. So it's it's clear that there is an understanding there that yes we need to do something it became a matter of how and what those steps are and we just weren't able to clarify enough in in the moment about what those steps are and how they work together so we're going to continue to do that and send them some more information and yeah. and show why the <coughs> full 1.5 really is needed in order to move forward cost effectively and uh, the church uh, includes a member of the finance committee right so no. I think we so know a can't can't be a member of the finance oh, because they can't right. serve on another. Yeah. They can't They'll serve on another. Um, but there will be you know, there's ample opportunity for input, and I do think there's you know, some language in here, you know, just like there is for us to come back to the finance committee and update. Um, So in, in two days, the Finance Committee is having a meeting and their third agenda item is annual town meeting preparation review and warrant articles and recommendations as needed. So they're still keeping that discussion open. That's on Thursday? That's this Thursday, 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 yeah, two days from today. So that just came out today, okay? Yeah, it came out today. Interesting, I wonder if it will come back up again. Sounded like they it had been open. running off a list of articles they had not taken a position on. I would suspect that's what they're still doing. Right. As needed. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I certainly didn't get the mean. sense they were going back to discuss. No, I'm not suggesting that. Yeah. I'm just saying they they have a chance to further discuss. I guess. And if there's any sign that they will be doing that, I I could get that. I guess that sort of presupposes that there's an article an amendment to the article that passes. Right. And they have taken positions on most articles. So, you know, what does that leave is what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. We good? Uh, we have a vote. So. No, I mean the capital, oh. the Warren article. Yeah. That's all. Yes. Now we can move to a, a vote, or well, a discussion on uh, whether about submitting the statement of interest for 2019. So, very interesting timing. Um, yeah. To resubmit the SOI, the deadline is April 12th, and we need a vote at the school committee and the select board before then. So this is, uh, you should talk from here. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, it's pretty much the same exact wordage, uh, verbiage, everything that you did last year. Um, so part of the process is school committee has to vote the SOI and then the selectman has to. Mm -hmm. So we're asking for your vote now and then we'll bring it to the selectman's meeting on April 1st. 
uh, for their vote. We attach it to our SOI application. Uh, well, we have to get it uh, st stamped approval uh, by the town, a uh, few signatures, but it does require uh, votes from both the selectmen as well as the school okay. committee. So it's the same process as last year. Yeah. Same SOI. And the same, same SOI, SOI is the same as last year. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing's changed, nothing's changed, changed other than a few more leaks. And <laughs> put, put the right dates on it. That's yeah, exactly. Um, absolutely, this makes sense. I mean, we're, we're not going to go for sure whether we're moving forward and until we can't an election after yeah. town meeting anyway, even if it right. hasn't there. So we absolutely have to do this. Yeah. And town deserves all the possible options. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, so I'll take a, a motion. I would, oops, are we doing the votes yet? There's language there. That's all that's left. Yes, you're right. I'm there. What's that? I would move yep, that, that the Concord School Committee vote to approve the CMS Statement of Interest 2019. Second. Any further comment or discussion? Thank you for pulling it together. Yeah, thanks. Copy all those in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Um, okay. Well, we got our two week push, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Here we go. Got a lot to meet, lots of tours. Days. <laughs> yeah, and I think we, uh, we don't know how it will all unfold, but I think we uh, are indebted to a lot of citizens and a lot of committees for paying a lot of attention mm -hmm. to this. Um, and there's going to be more of the same. Yeah. People are putting, in, putting in a lot of hard work to sort this out. Yeah. Try to move the town forward. And as somebody said earlier, uh, it's because kids are at the center of our attention. Absolutely. We're keeping an eye on that ball in this, in this bold way. Oh. Yep. yep. That's why we're here. Well, thank you to all these people who sit here hours and hours and hours of time have done, and you guys have done an amazing job. Exactly. And you should feel really good about the incredible thorough yeah. work yeah. that you've done. It's really been incredible. So we're all pushing the same big rock in the same direction, so it feels great. All right. Great. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll call the Concord School Committee then. We need to go back to order. And I'm calling the Concord Carlisle Regional School Committee to order and note we're being recorded. Um, oh, thank you. Public comments uh, first, and uh, we have a visitor from our great high school, Jennifer. So, hi, I'm Jenny Lee, one of the CCHS School Committee representatives. Um, now that we're almost three quarters of the way done with the school year, a lot has happened at CCHS. So starting with the end of February, there have been many sports championships and state competitions, um, as sports are always a very big part of um, the lives of CCHS students. And the boys varsity fencing team won the Division I state championship, which is super exciting. The girls varsity fencing team came in a solid sixth place, um, and the combined fencing team of both boys and girls also came in first place. The girls varsity basketball team was undefeated for the majority of their season with numerous star athletes on the team. And both the varsity indoor track team and the varsity swim and dive team had their state championship competitions at the end of February. Um, the girls swim and dive team placed second for the second time in CCHS history at Boston University. And bringing the team to victory, victory was Captain Livy Poulin who won the diving championship. The boys swim and dive team, which includes many talented year-round swimmers, came in 15th place. Overall, both teams had very good seasons. All winter sports are now over, and students are looking forward to spring sports, such as tennis and outdoor track and field, both of which started a week ago. There's also a lot happening with music at CC. The March Choral Concert was on March 21st, and the concert featured chorus students in the com combined men's, women's, and select choir. The concert was conducted by Ms. Smith. And then band and orchestra also have a concert coming up called Micah, which is next week. So rep band will also be playing in that concert, which will be conducted by Mr. Gresco. And art awards were also given out a few weeks ago. And the main award was for the Emerging Young Artists Exhibition, which was run by the College of Visual and Performing Arts at the University of Massachusetts. <laughs> so the three winners were Henry Johnstone, Alessandro Lepresti, and Glenn Martis, all of whom are seniors. Um, the school play is another large event at CC, and it features student actors from all four grades. The play is called Drowsy Chaperone, and was written by Bob Martin. The play is about a man who tries to find a cure for his sadness by listening to com comedic recordings of Drowsy Chaperone. 
The actors and technicians in the play put in a lot of time and effort to make the play as good as possible, all for the enjoyment of the audience members. Um, and CC also recently had a French foreign exchange program with students in Versailles, France. So the 18 French students were in the US for two weeks and spent time in the school building while also traveling to famous tourist sites in Boston, such as the State House and Fenway Park. Lastly, the student government has been kept very busy preparing for prom, which is May 18th, and is one of the largest events of the year for both juniors and seniors. Student Senate has also been hard at work running a very successful blood drive for em Emerson Hospital. There were approximately 50 blood donors who participated in the drive. And overall, there's a lot going on at CC, and students are very engaged in their work, and they're definitely being kept very busy. <laughs> Clearly. Nicely done. Wow. That's great. Thank you. And Thank uh, you. a couple of us went to that food uh, exhibition. Right, the um, cultural fair. Yeah. Yeah. Cultural fair. I mean, I, yeah. was, I, I was really amazed how many different yeah, types of foods were there, and it was wall-to-wall -wall people. I mean, it was very successful. Yeah, I went to that festival. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. Jenny, it's so great to hear all that's going on and just yeah. hear it from, from a student and, and the, just the life of everything that's happening in those walls. Thank you. You can't go to prom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you chaperone. Okay. Jenny, Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Colin? Carlin Reed, 83 Whitsand. I'm also chair of the, <clears throat> the Peg Access Advisory Committee, and uh, my comment addresses one of the items on your agenda that's later on down the list. It's under old business. It is the TV studio agreement. Just very briefly, I wanted to highlight one thing. My question is, is this the entire agreement? There is a paragraph at the very end, paragraph number nine, saying that this is the entire agreement of the document. And I remember from the previous discussion, that there was a sister agreement dealing with security. Mm -hmm. But I don't see any reference to that sister agreement, which could be attached as an exhibit C to this, for example. And I, that was the question I had, was what's the status on that agreement? So when you get to that, I'll be in the, in the audience, and if you need to uh, ask questions, I'll be available. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Carlos. The next agenda item is uh, recognitions, and we have Andrew Iamichi here this evening. share with you one of the many and exciting uh, initiatives that are that is happening uh, in our district uh, and one of them just happens to be the ADL uh, peer training program um, which sort of ties into our advisory program at the high school and I also have here with me uh, one of our few of our selective students uh, who participated in the three-day ADL uh, training program so we have Cameron Cole Isabella and Vicky. All right. And I apologize that Brad Jackson could not make it. Uh, both Brad and I worked on sort of um, uh, structuring uh, uh, the training program. I'm also joined here by Assistant Principal uh, Brian Miller, CCHS. Hi. <laughs> so, just you know, for folks that might not know what the Anti Defamation League is all about. Um, Anti Defamation League is an uh, international Jewish non governmental organization based in the United States. And its mission is to stop the defamation of Jewish people and to secure justice and fair treatment to all. So in the fall, 52 CCHS students were selected to participate in a three day ADL peer training. Um, which is also ha uh, happens to be part of the uh, World of Institute, uh, World of Difference Institute. The World of Difference Institute um, has really three goals. Uh, number one, to develop student leadership skills. Number two, to provide young people with the opportunity to learn about and address issues related to bias, bullying, and cyberbullying. And number three, to promote greater social responsibility in 
a more inclusive and respectful school community. And although our ADL training program wasn't as extravagant, I'm going to show you a very short uh, clip um, that basically um, highlights uh, the sort of the ADL uh, highlights the ADL training mo uh, model on a much larger uh, scale. So each year, the ADL puts on, well, the ADL and the World of Institute puts on uh, what is called the Youth Congress uh, Conference, and it is over 1,500 um, uh, participants comprising of students, uh, teachers, and community uh, leaders. So it's a very, very short clip. <laughs> All of you are the leaders here today. Now, today is not about tests, lectures, or homework. It's actually about changing the world. It's about making your world, making our world a little bit better. The biggest problem with our schools is that we don't know how to deal with situations of bias and prejudice. And so what we learned here today was how we can deal with that by making our school a safer place. This is my second time at Youth Congress. Um, I come back because I'm really inspired by uh, my peers around me and how motivated they are to change the world. A lot of the conversation is student run. So the students are leading other students in discussions about things that we want to change within our schools. <clears throat> Discrimination lives off silence. It feeds up no one saying anything about it. Never silence yourself because your voice is important. You have to realize that you have a voice to make change in any situation. It is important that you use your voice. Even if you do not think it will make a difference, it will. Because we need conversation, we need that dialogue to further people to change their thoughts for them to learn new things that they didn't know before. My dad used to ask me all the time, will courage skip your generation? And I knew every time he asked me that the answer had to be no. Courage is going to feel risky every single time. But I want you to remember that your silence is riskier. You need to be the leaders of today. Don't ever let anybody tell you that tomorrow is the time for your work. How are you going to start practicing courage? I've seen the effect that Youth Congress has on my students. When they come back and they're so energized, Right. So that's just a little taste of what the Youth Congress is about. <laughs> All right. Okay, so with those 52 CCHs uh, student leaders selected, uh, we went ahead and scheduled the three-day uh, training sessions, which happened in January, February, and March. With each uh, session, we pretty much had two objectives. Number one, to prepare student leaders to facilitate difficult conversations with their classmates in the advisory program. And two, to provide students with the tools and language to be able to, uh, to respond, speak up and out against bias, racism, <coughs> anti-Semitism, and all other forms of bigotry. Okay. Uh, once the ADL training is concluded, our student leaders uh, were paired with one other student um, uh, to begin facilitating uh, the topics discussed in the ADL uh, training. And so the advisory model, which is actually uh, was, is, is, was developed by uh, Principal, Assistant Principal Brian Miller, um, is aimed to enhance teacher to student connections and help educate students on multiple topics, such as those discussed in the ADL. Yeah, so Andrew did a good job describing it. Uh, so an advisory was something that we were to start when I was teaching at CC, so you know, talking a decade ago. And as Andrew said, it's all about building these connections. We all know that every bit of research shows that the more connections, positive connections students have with adults, the better they do. And advisory is just another opportunity for students to form that connection in a non-graded atmosphere, right? Um, we know that our students do a good job forming connections with their coaches and their directors and their, teach and their teachers, and this is just another opportunity. And it's also an opportunity for students to, for us to be really explicit about learning social-emotional skills. 
which is a, something that we're really choosing to focus on um, moving forward at CC. Absolutely. Right, so can I ask, how often do you guys meet? This is the advisory meeting. So we meet every week for about 20, what are 23 minutes, 22 minutes, 20-ish <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Um, and for me, it's one of my, I really enjoy it. I have my own advisory. Mike has his advisory. It's just a great time to be with students. And each grade sort of has its own curriculum that's developed. Um, age appropriate, what are seniors, what's appropriate for seniors. Mm -hmm. what's, what's what the beginning of for freshmen is all about sort of transitioning to CC. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a great time. I mean, I, I really enjoy that time of the week. That's great. That's yeah, awesome. For sure. That helps. And you guys all got to go? Yep. So out of the 52, uh, these four were part of that, of that three-day training. And so um, Cameron, um, Cole, Isabella, and Vicki are all going to share with you all sort of their experience in the three-day training uh, program, as well as sort of their experience facilitating those conversations. So since um, March 3rd was our last training. They've actually gone into the sophomore advisory groups to actually mm -hmm. be the leaders to facilitate uh, a lot of the trainings, topics that we're discussing in ADL. So, Cameron, you want to start us off? Should we have the mic so we can capture it? No. Okay. Oh, okay, they'll be right there. Okay, I just don't want to miss it. We're good. We're good. Um, as long as you speak loudly. Right, yeah. So, uh, so myself and my peers uh, during this eight. During <laughs> this experience, it was actually very, very interesting. We got to practice leadership skills. Um, I remember, I believe every single time that we went, we had this thing where we had to go to the front of the room and essentially, not, not ramble on, but talk about one specific thing. Uh, it could be either a so, uh, social issue, like pressing kind of deep sort of social issue, or something as uh, small as what makes you smile. So between these, we had to kind of learn to project our voice, we have to learn to kind of lead the group and uh, engage the crowd and see how we could more effectively kind of present ourselves to everyone else, kind of like what we're doing here. So um, I thought that aspect of it was very, very interesting. Um, the second aspect I thought was actually really helpful was the uh, social issues. So what we discussed in ADL was kind of deep pressing issues, things that people are not typically able to talk about effectively. Um, because they either have they're either controversial two sides, or they're just kind of deep. They're they're, they're not a big normal topic, um, and being able to kind of voice our opinions and uh, in, in a safe place like that, and learn how to uh, facilitate that in other individuals, it is both really interesting and really effective. Because at that point, we can take what we've learned of that in in kind of those three days and apply it to the rest of our school, which is, I think, the bigger sort of meaning of this, kind of allowing everyone else uh, within our sort of social circles to uh, share these uh, the experiences, share their ideas, and uh, talk about these pressing matters. So I also really enjoyed the, us being trained um, because it was, I was pretty vulnerable because um, we were learning leadership topics, but also how to discuss the, like the, the issues the ADL deals with, like, um, Really, like racism, like really powerful, um, like deep emotions that people can have about the issues, and so I think it was really useful for me to learn how to deal with those, um, and also learn how to like talk about my own feelings in like a constructive way, and how to like deal with other people's feelings. Um, and then we just started um, the training with the sophomore advisories, and I'm actually a partner with Bella. Um, but I'm a sophomore, so I have a lot of my friends in the class, um, which I think is really great because I get to like teach my friends about like issues that are important to me, and I think that everybody should be able to learn and speak about safely. Um, it's, it's been going pretty well. Um, it's hard to get the students to talk because, like I said, the topics are really, um, really powerful, um, but I think we're starting, starting to like, like warm up to them and like, become more comfortable, like really powerful and good. Yeah, so Colin Cameron did a really good job explaining it. Um, I think for me, the training was, I guess, like eye-opening because I feel like I wasn't super aware of the topics and the matters that we were um, discussing and I was like not super comfortable talking about those things and the trainings really helped me kind of come out of my shell a little bit and like become more comfortable recognizing and like talking about those issues um, to people in my community and also recognizing them even in myself and like figuring out how to change them in a productive way and how to make other people more aware and also as Cameron said it was also really helpful um, learning how to 
like project and like present and comfortably in front of people, um, and especially with the advisories, like can be a little bit nerve wracking. But I feel like the training really helped me with that. Um, also with teaching advisories, um, as Cole said, like it was hard to kind of get them going because it's hard to like have them recognize like how deep and like I guess pressing like, the talks that we talk about are. But I think that it's going to go in a really positive direction, and I really enjoy doing it. Okay, so um, I think that ADL was a really good experience for us to have because we had a leader, like a teacher, come in who was really passionate about the topics that they were talking about and teaching us because I feel like a lot of the times um, social issues, we do read about them. Like in school, we do get, I don't know, papers or something to educate us about it, but having someone uh, really talk about their experiences as well and in a very engaging way was a really nice experience to have. And so moving on into teaching ADL in the classrooms, I think it was also very nice to see um, different kinds of teacher-student interactions because I don't know what happens in my advisory, but I could tell that in the advisory I was in, um, the kids were really comfortable with the teacher as well. And they're very respectful, but I definitely think that, like they said, some of these issues are very big and hard to talk about. So <coughs> warming them up with like activities to get them going kind of helps a lot. And yeah, I think that it's going in a positive direction. Great, wow. Thank you, thank you. And one thing that I did leave out was that each session was actually facilitated by um, two adult trainers from ADL. Um, so they came out and actually uh, facilitated the trainers. Um, I think well, one of the action plans moving forward, and um, Jenna Lashley, she is a CCHS health and fitness teacher. She is sort of the main coordinator, but she's on um, maternity leave at the moment. So myself and Brad uh, Jackson sort of took it over to, to uh, sort of keep the program afloat while she's away. And so one of the um, action plans that we have is to collect feedback um, from students about how um, uh, their experiences were so that we can you know, have you know, a lot of energy behind it going into next year and maybe you know, double the size of, of, of the students that we trained uh, this year. So, so Andrew, uh, the training well. sessions, were they all day? Yes, they were all day all from, from 8.30 till 2.41, yes. Wow. <laughs> with with five minute, 10 minute breaks here and there, and of course each day we, we, we provided them pizza, pizza. Which, <laughs> yeah. which, which was great, <laughs> we kept them engaged. And has the high school done this before, or, and do you see it happening in the future? Yes, yeah, so the ADL model, and, and Brian, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, has been in existence at the high school. Um, and especially this year, we're taking a, a closer look at, at, at some of the um, sort of modules that, that, um, that the facilitators use to see if we need to maybe um, exclude some modules out and focus on, on some of the activities. You know, if we had more time, I, I had an activity for, for for you all to actually engage in, but that will be for next time. <laughs> You're gonna get them um, back. But definitely, hopefully, uh, next year we'll be able to invite invite you all to actually see the, the training in action. It's very helpful. Great. Absolutely. And then, how long are you all going into these sophomore advisories for? Is that multi weeks that you spend? Seven weeks. Wow, that's great. So you actually have you have time, and you each go into the same advisory each time. So you're building a relationship with that group, and you can grow with them. You can wow. save the world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> seriously, they are. <laughs> it's they in the light. How many students in these advisories? Uh, About fifteen. Yeah. Twenty. Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. I think it varies, but it's no. they're pretty small numbers, so. Small it's enough like easy yeah. to get a discussion going rather than talking about kids in class. Right, right. It's nice to see the uh, student leadership opportunities, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and thank you for stepping up. Yeah. It's very impressive. Thank you. Yes, amazing. And and just you know that what is happening at CCHS is sort of is also happening at the middle school through our um, Celtics Playbook Initiative, which I'm sure you'll hear about. Yeah. Uh, going into next month when, when Justin and I hopefully are invited back. And so it's, it's, it's amazing what we're doing in terms of sort of educating students uh, on, on, this, on these difficult topics. So, yeah. awesome. the, the video spoke of courage and 
what you came uh, here tonight with was a message of courage, and you were very articulate, and mm. we're very proud of you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And and your adult leaders, of course. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> keep them empowered. That's right. That's right. So, wow. Thank you Respect for your time. Thank you so much. And then that, but okay. that's oh, fine. Sorry, we'll go ahead. Minutes. No, that's all right. I can yeah. move to approve the minutes. Oh, what's the date? I looked at them. March 1st. First. March 1st, thank you. Second. Everybody have a chance with them? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, so I'd like to then, move. Then I would like to move. <laughs> well, go ahead. Move go ahead. I was going to move <laughs> to uh, take up the environment sustainability discussion earlier fine. than in the agenda now and then return to the agenda. Second. <coughs> Discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Kate Hanley. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having me, and thanks for moving me up in the agenda. <laughs> I know you all have a lot to cover. I ended up doing books tonight, but glad we could can make it work. Um, and thanks to Lori for oh, thank you. For inviting it's your third trip here today. So <laughs> we're, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Glad you're glad you're back. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Um, so Lori asked me to just chat a little bit about some of the collaborations that we've been working on. Um, so, but just for context, I'm the town sustainability director. I've been here about a year and a half now. Um, my role was created um, through a town meeting vote that also committed the town to ambitious climate goals. So our goals are around greenhouse gas reductions, 80% by 2050, which is the state's goal and the Paris climate goal. And we've also committed to addressing um, climate resilience, so being prepared for the impacts of climate change that we're going to see. So um, I work with a lot of folks in the community, um, but excited to be collaborating with the schools because I think you know, for one, the schools have a big impact on our greenhouse gas emissions, um, but also it's a really great opportunity. Um, I mean, these kids are just so inspiring, and it's such a great way to talk about sustainability is with um, some of our youngest residents. So um, one of the things that we've been working on is bringing together a monthly meeting of sustainability advocates and practitioners um, and other committee members in town to talk about what can we be doing in the schools to align with the town's goals. Um, so we've been kind of brainstorming and just today talked about some vision and, and goals that the town um, and the, that would align the school with the town's goals, um, which I'm really excited about. I think Jared just passed out copies of the draft hot off the presses and there will be more changes to make after our meeting this afternoon. Um, and then one of the things that um, we've been working on most recently is we just applied for a grant from the state for another electric school bus. Um, so really excited to be able to collaborate on some more operational things and take advantage of, of some grants um, that you know are available for sustainability in schools and wherever we can coordinate more on those, the better. So. Anything else you wanted me to mention or I think those are the highlights. We wanted this to be a dialogue. We thought Kate could come and first introduce herself, but also give you a sense of where we're going. Um, so the committee work that we're doing right now with the group that met this afternoon, it's our third third meeting, something like that. The goal I had for this group this year was to develop a plan. What are we trying to accomplish? What are our goals? What are our priorities? And then start to lay out how we're going to get there. Um, it's kind of, it's been very, it's such an energetic, rich group that it's almost happened in reverse where we brainstormed the what we might want to try and are now looking at the goals and next meeting, uh, we're going to cross-reference them and uh, today we picked, I think about five, five of those as priorities. It was really hard, we could have kept, you keep looping back and you can't take anything off the list. Uh, uh, five of those as priorities, and then we're going to take the really deep list of ideas that we brainstormed at the last meeting and start to really get our 
action items in place. Um, there's no list, no short of, shortage of ideas. This group is quite a think tank. So um, I think we'll probably start with some ideas that are uh, easier than others, just to get the momentum going. A lot of our conversation about is putting this as a front and center uh, effort that the schools have this invested in this, and that we want to be sure that kids and parents and staff see this as a, a mode we want to be operationally uh, working under regularly. And that just becomes change of habits and making it our mindset continuously. So a um, little bit of both culture shift too, I think, <coughs> to make it part of how we do everything, but also with some really clear, concrete objectives. So uh, lots of good work to have there. And Kate's just this invaluable resource of knowing what grants are available, knowing what else is going on in the community, liaisoning us with other groups. You, Nick Pappas is here from the Climate Action Advisory Committee, which I'll be attending tomorrow night. You've seen Nick's email to all of us in terms of what our commitment might be if, as we talk about adding parking, which I think we can move to in the later agenda item. But it's really becoming a really broad effort and with a lot of productive direction to go. And then when we engage the kids, which Peter Nickel helps us do through the green team when they meet, and you know I've been <coughs> over to meet with them. I, I think you know there's going to be a lot of incredible opportunities here to come, um, both at the adult and student level. So it's really exciting. And I, Kate's just becoming a spoke for us because th that's all she does. I'm like a <laughs> field. So we every time we get her in the room, it just hones us right back in again on on that as our as our topic. So really great. Okay, what kind of um, experience or like how, how, how much can you get from um, other schools doing particular things or how have you been able to kind of, you know, instead of reinventing the wheel, but yeah. know of other places that... Yeah, there's, I think there's a lot to learn from other schools and I you know that Acton, you know, locally I've met with one of their, with their sustainability person in their schools and they've been doing some really cool stuff that I think we could model if, mm -hmm. if we wanted to. Um, there were some regional um, resources and then some national resources. So um, when I was thinking about these goals, I looked at the U.S. Green Building Council has a green schools program um, that a lot of local schools have picked up on and they have some principles. So there's a lot that, that's already that's out great. there. We, yeah. we need to reinvent the wheel, just really customize for Concord. And that's our goal, you know, with the Climate Action Advisory Board, looking at the whole community and um, you know, what I'm working on with them, they just were recently formed in October, mm -hmm. so they're also a new group. But thinking about, you know, we have our goals and we have our baseline, how do we connect the dots and what's our, our climate action plan? Um, and this goal is the same there, that there's a lot out there and there's a lot of best practices that we can make the most of and customize for, for Concord. So Great. I had a question about the electric bus. Mm -hmm. What's the timeline on that? They said we will hear back mid-2019, so best guess sometime this summer. We'll find out if we received the grant. Um, just, just in time for the school year. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm very hopeful that we will get it. I think that, you know, you all know that we're definitely a leader in that space, yep. and it's something I know the state is really interested in, in rolling out. And is this a, uh, a different version than the one we, we got yeah. a couple years ago? Yeah, the technology has advanced since we received the first bus, mm -hmm. um, which I think is good news. There's more options and um, more local maintenance of, that's available for the bus. So uh, I'm optimistic that the next bus will be even better than the first bus. And in terms of overall cost and how it breaks down, is it? The grant will cover 80% of the cost of the bus. Which is approximately? Um, the Approximate cost of us is about three hundred and sixty thousand. Yeah, I was disappointed yeah. that the costs have not gone down. I'll say it hasn't come down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's still right up there. But it brings the the cost of you know to the to the school le under what it can less what than what we usually pay for yeah. for a bus. So oh, yeah. that's great. Do we do we are we at an advantage this time because last time we had to buy the the charger and all the. Yeah, infrastructure we did a lot of infrastructure work from what I understand, and uh, <laughs> Brian knows better than yeah. I do. Um, but, you know, it would be easier to install the charging infrastructure, Yeah. you know, given that we have the first bus, which I hope that will be compelling to the state yeah. in deciding to give us the funding. This was funding through the Volkswagen settlement mm -hmm. um, that MassDP is in charge of administering, and 
the state received a lot of funding. It's not all included in this year's grants, so my expectation mm -hmm. is that there will be future grants um, that are available and hopefully for larger sums of money so we could, you know, get more than one at a time. Mm -hmm. So are you saying the Volkswagen money is going to be spent over several years? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So not all this year, but... Yeah, the state got 70-something million yeah, dollars, okay. and yeah. they're rolling out just a portion of it this yeah. year. Okay, so we can apply again next year. Huh? Yeah, that's my hope, yeah. <laughs> How many buses are they doing this year? It's just a cap of, you know, a certain amount per okay. community that you can apply for. And oh, okay. The settlement covers a lot of things like ferries and tugboats that aren't, mm -hmm. aren't as useful to us. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it is next week. Yeah, um, no, I was just curious about the, on the goals on the back. Back to your point, Laurie, about it's hard to narrow them down. Um, these are fabulous ideas on the back of your sheet. Can you give us a teaser as to what the, your top, the top five were? I think Go zero ahead. waste was probably yeah. the most popular, um, uh -huh. and having a lot of overlap with you know green cafeterias. Yeah, I think especially given some of the, the composting efforts have been hap happening, I think that's really top of mind for a lot of folks. Um, transportation, obviously, um, a, a big issue that's important. And then I think the curriculum yeah. piece was really exciting to people and mm -hmm. community engagement and how can we use the curriculum and integrate sustainability right. into the curriculum so it's not just, you know, a separate yeah. conversation right. about sustainability, but that's really part of a lot of different... But woven in. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah I was able to share. Yesterday I was at a classroom <coughs> at PD and the science teacher who's teaching currents is showing a video of the plastic pollution in the ocean and how that's traveling and, and boy there's multiple messages there all at once the lesson was currents not sustainability right. but there was the li the linkage the value so if we can just keep thinking in that way more and more right. Right. yeah there's a lot of obviously that's a big undertaking to leave sustainability yes. into the entire curriculum yeah, but absolutely. i think there's a lot of great yeah. examples and a lot of opportunity and there's a lot of resources available for for helping with that so, Laura, you, you spoke of how you want to communicate what's happening mm -hmm. here. Um, and Kate, you're emblematic of just how critically important all of this is, the fact that you're here and giving us technical support. Um, can we at some point, leading question, can we at some point in the near future hear more about how some of these initiatives are being carefully monitored and measured? I think that's going to be critical to the report sure. out of what's happening, and it's right. going to be a huge motivator for us to right. uh, accelerate our efforts. Right. So that's the work over the next few months to, uh, by the end of the school year, really have that detailed action plan that allows for some measurable uh, and, you know, components. To it. <coughs> um, we had a little bit of that discussion yesterday on being sure we know where the starting point is and can can assess progress. So um, that that's the goal by the end of the school year is that we've got that all outlined. Can you just remind us the makeup of the committee? Yeah, it's there's different people there. every time I look in the room. <laughs> word is getting out. So it's a, um, it's a couple of us from the central office. Um, we have some teachers who volunteered, and uh, a middle school teacher, two middle school teachers, Peter Nickel from the high school. Um, we have a number of community members who are very engaged in other arenas. So there's probably four or five of them today. There were parents there from Thoreau that I honestly didn't know how they knew about it and it was great because I, I talked with them on other, I assumed, because we had conversations with them on the work they're doing in composting yeah. and they were able to be part of the discussion so it's a little bit evolving which is yeah. great because the energy builds every time so it's great yeah I'm your liaison that so far I've had conflicts every time right. <laughs> well, like that, you know, I got, the, Bob, Bob, I got Bob, the next two meetings <laughs> and I, I, I don't have today and uh, I have to say one of those bullet points was about buildings and somebody yes. did bring up the building hopefully close and dear to our hearts. Yes. Right. Yeah, yes. That was encouraging. And make it a net zero building. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, one last point. Um, because you work with several committees in town, right? So it, it, I think it'd be good for all of us to kind of know mm -hmm. the, the scope of your 
involvement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's two that I work most closely with. One is the Comprehensive Sustainability and Energy Committee, CSEC. They've been around for quite a while now, um, <coughs> have done a lot of community engagement around energy and sustainability. Um, most recently, they ran the Heat Smart program, which is promoting heat pumps. This year, they're doing um, a sustainable landscaping fair in May at Royal Globe School um, and some other you know, kind of outreach efforts. And then the Climate Action Advisory Board, which is newer, and their charge is really to advise me and the town and all of us on how do we meet these big climate goals that we have. Um, and they were just formed in October, so we only met a handful of times. Um, but like I mentioned, my goal for them is to help advise on a climate action plan. How do we get there? Um, but they also are, are a great group that I think would be a really good resource to you know to you all, to the schools, to me, to <coughs> our other group. Um, they have a lot of diverse expertise in climate and sustainability, so they can definitely be a resource as we're trying to come up with new exciting strategies to tackle these big challenges. That's great. That's great. Awesome. Anything Thank else? You. Just so excited too to hear that so many people are getting involved, oh, yeah. and isn't that a great way to get you know as you have priorities that get designated yeah. to have people there who are ready and willing to yeah. help run with them is just terrific. That's great. I'd like to call out a couple of people in the audience who um, have been leading uh, people on these topics. Uh, Nick Pappas, who's the chair of the CAB, and. Uh, Brian Foltz, who's been involved in this stuff all along uh, and was instrumental in the first bus and has been following this bus, and was on the Energy Futures Task Force, and uh, always involved in this stuff. So we're lucky to have. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Yes. So, which kind of leads us into uh, chairs and liaison reports. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, Kate. Before you do that, I'm going to interrupt you again, Bob. Oh my God! <laughs> I'm getting it's, good. It's only the first time <laughs> in know. three years on the <laughs> school committee. Exactly. <laughs> first time in three years. I love it. That's right. It's almost like you're nearing the end of your trip. <laughs> yeah, ah! I know. <laughs> advantage of in fact, yeah. <laughs> um, it, I, I'm going to jump back to kind of recognitions here for a second and and jump in because I want to recognize that three of our esteemed members are going to be leaving us soon and that this is actually their last school committee meeting. Okay. So we wanted to, to just <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> we want yeah. to acknowledge all of you briefly. You. Now um, I'm gonna put it out there that we're going to invite or force you all to come back again later because we really want to take some time to toast you and and celebrate and the reality is we're not gonna let you go yet because we're gonna <laughs> recruit you and do a lot of work still between now and the end of April because we need you still. Um, so we're not actually gonna <laughs> completely celebrate you and let you go yet, but we wanted to acknowledge the fact that this is the last time we'll have you here at this table. Um, and I know that a couple of us have worked with you for many years and I will at least say that coming onto this committee, you've got two of you have been the experts since I got here. And imagining this experience without you is going to be very different. Um, and I really appreciated all of your expertise. And I'll just I think leave you'll it be that fun. for now. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll make it. You'll move and Bob, <laughs> talk about somebody who dove in and listened and did all of the research ever possible before, Everything. before, right, before voicing an opinion and getting in, moving on things. Um, and that has been so incredibly helpful to all of us. And so, the, the three of you and the expertise that you provide are just so valuable here and we wanted to recognize that we appreciate having you here and that we are sad that it's the last time you'll be at the table with us. That's oh. weird. I know. It is. <laughs> and we have a little something for each of you. Oh. oh my God. <laughs> Thank you. I can do this without spilling. Okay. Well, you want to help me? Here we go. Can we get that? Sure. Can I sit it right here for the meeting? Yeah, that's right. Oops. There we go. Thank you. Thank you.
Oh my gosh, beautiful. Just some little arrangements to do. Nicely. Thank you very much. We're, we still got some work to do. We do have work to do. <laughs> so there we go. Now enjoy your flowers and don't run away yet. <laughs> we got some time. And just as the students uh, uh, spoke of the courage required to do what they do, uh, uh, those of us around the table who remain uh, will we'll need some courage. Uh, and your phone numbers. <laughs> but you've prepared us well, so thank you very, very much. Yes. Well, you know, I'm just in total denial, and I know my <laughs> committee members are here, and I'm excited to have them, but I, I, it's a lot of transition, and we're just not letting you go yet. I think I've <laughs> exactly. got too much work to do. But, we could yeah. extend town meeting to a fourth night. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to keep you with us. You know, yeah. Yeah. There'll be more comments to follow when you we drag you back here. Exactly. It's yeah. been a pleasure As the year winds to work down with all for three of you. And, when I think of some of the work we've done over the last my five years uh, together, it's been extraordinary. And, uh, you know, we've come at this with all kinds of different viewpoints, but one thing I have always known is that we've got the students' best interests at heart. Sorry. That's called to a common denominator. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. We still, we still got a few weeks. Yeah. yeah Few weeks, a few we gotta, weeks. We gotta get a few things across the finish line. <laughs> things to finish. But you can bask sure. in the thanks for yes. yes. No, <laughs> that, that is really sweet of you to recognize it. It's been a long time at this table. I know. It's it's very so strange. strange. You can come back and visit anytime. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Or not. <laughs> okay. For and also, I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> 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 but, and I'll stop interrupting Bob for No. Oh, come on. <laughs> All you. Anyways, uh, liaison reports. Anybody? Uh, I mean, we've touched on a couple of subjects, and we're going to touch on a couple of others later on in the meeting. So, um, unless there's something. Um, yeah, I mean, I was at the league's education committee meeting, um, but that's more. I can probably update it more. It more had to do yeah, with middle school discussions. So yeah. I'll touch on okay. that later when once we let okay. these guys go and they don't have to do middle school or all of it. Yeah. So. Back to the normal schedule, uh, superintendents. Yeah, it's been a long time. We got off cycle here a bit. So <laughs> I'm really thrilled to uh, formally announce the hiring of a new principal at Alcott. Uh, I appointed Naomi Krakow about a little over a week ago. Um, she's coming to us out of an elementary school in Boston, very experienced. Uh, she was a fit for us right from the early parts of the search. Now, seemed to be something that resonated consistently across all of the stakeholders. We had two really strong candidates. Um, I learned earlier this week our uh, other finalist was hired in Lincoln. Okay. So oh, we're right. having a <laughs> stay closer too. So That's great. it all really it was a great process and people are really excited. I introduced Naomi to Sharon virtually this week and they're setting up a call this week and then come visits so we get some transition time in before the end of the school year. So Really exciting. So, um, how did she get started? Uh, like a teacher, and then she kind of went through. Yeah, um, she was actually an upper grade teacher, and okay. I, I believe the way she described it was sort of accidentally becoming principal. She had made her way to the assistant principalship, and the principal left suddenly mid year, and she got tagged and never looked back, and it's been very successful where she is, um, with a very diverse population. Um, it's, a, it's one of the schools in the section of Boston that draws um, multiple kind of demographic, which I think really well suits her to Alcott. Um, and she just brings a really nice way about her, very approachable, great listener, you can see that early on. And I'm um, really excited to be here. I think oh, good. personal decision with our tiny little kids to get out of the city was well-timed as well. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's great. Exciting. So then on to the next one. Uh, <laughs> right. We are well I'm along best. the way through the direct search for a director of student services. We collected applications, um, which closed March 15th. I'm sitting in with the search committee just to stay close and get as much exposure to the candidates as possible, which is a little different than Alcott. I didn't get involved until we had finalists. 
Um, they, this afternoon, they finished questions for the interviews. We're scheduled to interview on the April 9th and 10th. Um, we will have finalists before the break. They'll come back after the break for parent and teacher forums. And then similar pattern to what we did with the outbound principal, a session with the administrative team and one on one time with me. Um, we have a really strong pool, so we're excited. We did add a survey component. This one's so much broader bandwidth that we wanted to make sure everyone got access to give us input, even if they couldn't put in a you know, FaceTime with us. So the survey's gone out to the um, staff and the entire parent community. We did some reflecting on the scope of this reconfigured position and realized we didn't want to limit to special ed because we're including 504 and ELL and mental health and, and medical and decided we'd open it to anybody who wanted to give us an input. So uh, really exciting. I'm looking forward to meeting candidates that get invited in and hopefully doing it all over again <laughs> as easily as that first one. <laughs> so. uh, other efforts, the middle school has worked really uh, in a committed way to using that West Ed report. We have a tentative plan going into next year over the last two weeks that's been finalized. So Justin and his uh, special education staff are beginning to share out the vision. It looks similar to the high school plan, much because uh, through the work out of West Ed and consultation with the high school, they saw that that model would in parallel, both fit the needs of the middle school, but also allow us a really nice continuum going forward. Um, so they're beginning to share that plan out. They brought it here to the leadership team this morning, and they're going to the elementary schools, first at the staff level. There is a parent forum planned for May 8th, I think, where uh, the parents of elementary kids moving toward the middle school can come and learn. And we're really excited to see it all fleshed out, and the, the enthusiasm of the staff is energizing. So. Um, education, educator evaluation, I've been meeting with a committee of the CTA. We met for the last time yesterday. We've been through the entire Appendix C portion of the contract, and have tweaked deadlines and a cleanup and, and a few other things while we had really rich discussion about the evaluation process. That draft will go to the bargaining team as part of the housekeeping work so that it all gets incorporated into the final document once we've um, come to agreement in a new contract. Student wellness, I am so thrilled to see the rebirth of challenge success this year. The middle school took that on in the early part of the year. The high school's really taken on in the late part of the year. We have surveys out to parents and families at the middle and high school right now. Tonight is homework free night K-8 to allow <laughs> like that in my house. Yep, to <laughs> allow everybody to step back and do other things. Um, the high schools moved to one homework free weekend per month in a, another concerted effort and the, the plans are just blossoming and I, they're just going to keep rolling forward. So excited. Um, the high schools also put in a CEF grant for further challenge success training and <coughs> engagement, um, lots of positives. School safety, uh, part of the outcome of our safety committee work has been to look at communication tools, so we're moving forward with a tool called Crisis Go, uh, which will eventually give us all apps that allow us to communicate in crisis or push the panic <laughs> button in crisis, um, communicate with the police throughout crisis, very different mode of um, communication that we have not had available to us. So that's in its early stages that's, of being. That's for the adults in the community? It's for the adults, right. right. Uh, so we're in the early stages of setup there. We are looking at a state grant. A grant opened up uh, a couple of weeks ago. You might remember I went to a rollout that Governor Baker had way back in the fall of funding that became available for school safety. and. In the grand launch of that discussion, they had incorporated feedback from the Superintendents Association that school safety was as much about mental health as it was security. And so the grant actually, the money, I've been asking, all, I've asked the state rep, I've been asking everybody, where is that money? Well, it finally, finally arrived, and of course we have a two-week turnaround or something really short on both grants. Um, so there's one strand that's the security grant strand, so we're drafting a grant focused on the security cameras that we've been talking about, which may offset monies in other places, and some of the communication tools we need. And 
Jared's office working on that collaboratively with the police. The other funding also emerged in the mental health strands so of the high school guidance department has collaborated with, I think, about five other districts to put in a grant to build a pro consult. They want money for consult to build a program to help kids in crisis who, this is our pattern, often go to ERs or crisis centers but aren't hitting the threshold for service when they get there. And then we've got a family that is in a really bad place without the right supports. So they're trying to create some mid-level service provision and um, are collaborating with, like I said, about five other communities nearby. So we're hoping the state's receptive to both of those grants. That's um, a great idea yeah. to go in with other communities. That was an idea. They've been meeting as a guidance team, multiple districts for a while now, talking on all the challenges we're all facing. So the idea was already there, and then the money Wow. became available and they they've hopped right on it so wow. hopefully we'll hear soon one way or another they're going to keep going it's yeah. always easier to start up money it's more accessible quickly. Right. yeah that's great the middle school i'll talk on the the not the warren article part of the medical school but the rest of it the reconfiguration plans are far and wide and we can talk more of this when we get to this concrete part of the meeting but um the depth of work we have to do has uh, struck us <laughs> from moving teachers between buildings or within buildings to the capital money we put in for painting and rugs and a new science lab to the entire new schedule Justin's built. It's really going to be a huge project this summer. So Jared's office is taking on the move. Um, Brian's obviously, Schlegel's is obviously leading the coordination of the capital projects, which all have to happen in a certain order and right the minute school gets out. Um, yeah, so we, we're, we're on it, and uh, <laughs> we're gonna be sure that it all comes out the way it needs to. Um, in terms of innovation and uh, engagement, uh, we had a great session, a couple of you were there with Jean Thompson Grove. Oh. Kristen's gonna, that was just great seed work for where we would wanna go in terms of teaching and learning in 21st century. Uh, Kristen's gonna lead one of her committees next year as our innovative we don't know what to call it yet, innovative uh, pedagogy committee rather than, she's really cycled through most of her content strands that give us a window right now where things are, fair, are up to date and being <laughs> implemented and we can shift over and talk more engagement, innovation, project based and get a group of that's teachers great. from across the district to brainstorm on what we think that should look like. So that's exciting. And then cultural proficiency, I'm having a hard time capturing them all as you might have seen when the kids were here. Um, and this list that I put together is recent and in a very short amount of time. Uh, the high school led an international fair, as Bob mentioned, hot, very successful. The middle school participated in a Boston Celtics Playbook initiative, which was originally sponsored by a high school student. So they're going to come in a month or so and share that out. Same types of themes of bias and race and disability, things like that. The high school hosted a Thurgood, Thurgood Marshall Assembly, community film showing of uh, On the Line, which is our uh, METCO movie. Uh, Andrew was awarded a METCO grant to fund a performance of a uh, uh, play by Boston Latin School, so we're getting a date set for them to come out, so $2,000 to subsidize that. CCHS uh, PA Parent Advisories hosting Debbie Irving, author of Waking Up White. Um, this morning we were invited, the administrators were invited to have dinner with that with her. I'm sure any of you who mm -hmm. want to join us are welcome. She'll be presenting at seven, but arriving in Concord at five. So it'll be at the high school. So just let me know if you're interested. We'd be thrilled to have you. Yeah. I used to work with her husband. Oh, awesome. Oh, hi. Well, come have dinner. Um, yeah, and we attended, we had tried to host our own job fair in March, which wasn't well responded to. It's hard to get people here, but um, Saturday we went into Belmont like we did a year ago. A few of us, uh, Andrew, Beth Duddy from HR, and Justin and I went in and attended the same diversity <coughs> fair and were able to meet another um, good handful of potential candidates that we're still in discussion with. So definitely worth our time and energy and great Great to partner with them. Um, you know, lastly, just again, it's been a little while, so the list got long here. The Board of Health has reached out, Concord Board of Health uh, is partnering with us to write a grant to address the vaping epidemic. Carlisle's included in that in Bedford, um, trying to bring us resources, parent education, 
Uh, something that's really starting to emerge in other districts is um, uh, diversion programs and some restorative restorative types of approaches to the vaping rather than just uh, punitive suspensions and things like that. Um, we all see the need, the kids need more education on what they're doing. Um, and so we're, I was thrilled to be approached by the Board of Health to partner with them on that. <coughs> I'm at every school between now and the April break just for round table breakfasts and they really, it was great. They, they come out and talk to me and uh, have her a bagel and a muffin in the morning. So that's <laughs> great. That's great. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed the St. Patrick's Day luncheon with the senior citizens of Concord and Carlisle and the high school kids uh, a week and a half ago. Just a really great, just a really great time. Um, our seniors have so much to offer us. We need to just stay really engaged with them. Really fun. Uh, we've been meeting with, this is a program that's been at the high school, really focused, it's a Carlisle initiated program with seniors from, senior citizens from Carlisle. It's a poetry and rhyme program and we're looking to expand that and also put some sustainable funding to it. And it's a partnership with kids and senior citizens to read poetry and talk on poetry. And there's a facilitator who's been getting a stipend through the Carlisle Council on Aging who does all the logistics, recruits the, <coughs> recruits the senior citizens, the transportation, the scheduling, and then leads the poetry. It's actually a poetry therapy session that she leads. So it's really exciting. So we want to expand that and just anchor it. Um, the funding stream needs to be solidified too. Is that, is that Mary Zoll? No. I'll look at my name. You're That's right. I know. I'm blank now. Uh, we also met with Concord Rotary uh, and two volunteers, Justin and I, uh, to look at bringing some of the student community service opportunities that are available at the high school to the middle school. Both of those were initiated by the community members involved and offering to come and support those same programs at the middle school. Uh, some of it's already a place in Carlisle, so it's great they've reached out to us. Uh, tomorrow I, I'm at the CAAC meeting, and the Lion King opens Thursday night at the, at the middle school, so we're anxiously looking forward to that. And then this should be quite entertaining. The Faculty Follies at the high school show is on April 6th. I'm anxiously awaiting to see what they've done with my high school picture. Oh. <laughs> Well, and we're all the parody go. of me and Mr. Mistrulo that we got, we gave permission for them to do. <laughs> oh, no. So it should be an interesting, yeah, interesting. time. <laughs> Nothing more humbling than a bunch of us administrators texting our mothers if we could get a high school picture. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, I love what, what time is that? <laughs> so we're going to all go? Uh, I know, 7 o'clock, I think. <laughs> it's been a long time since they have one of those. I know, it has yeah. been a while. It's going to be fun. <laughs> it's going to be fun. I, I just remember Ben Campbell being God. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he still is, yeah. right? Yep, yep. Thank you. Laurie, I just had a question on the Thurgood Marshall Assembly. Uh, do you know any details as to what? It was a, essentially a one actor show. It Ooh. took them through the whole one work of show. him. He, it was him, you know, a yeah, portrayal yeah, yeah. of him. Very well received by the kids. Okay, we're good with that. I'm exhausted just to see that. I know. <laughs> exactly. I had a report in the last. So. That's just the fun stuff. That is the yeah. fun stuff. <laughs> we'll do all the other stuff too. That's the fun stuff. So the next item is uh, correspondence, and we uh, received two emails today mm -hmm. concerning the high school capital project. One was short and one was long. And uh, we received. And we also received an email a few days ago from uh, Nick Pappas, who is the chair of the Climate Action Advisory Committee, and we'll probably discuss that in our next mm -hmm. item. And also, we received a memo from uh, Carlisle. Was it yesterday? Or the day before? Yesterday. Yesterday, uh, which also yes. will be discussed. So, and brings us to the next. Uh, Agenda item, the capital warrant article for the high school. I don't know who wants to start with where we are and talk on what's been happening and what's going to happen next. Um, we're all really busy, so probably a little recap would be a good starting place. So want me to start? Sure. Yeah, well, um, so updates. Uh, well, I shouldn't be started. <coughs> we did an info session last night. Mm -hmm. We're just starting those. We're getting a little traction with people coming to ask about that. 
Um, I think there's a lot going on at the same time. We, we're going to present to the board, the select board, on Monday to have an opportunity. You're, so, you're presenting tomorrow to mm -hmm. just climb the standard. I think maybe you want to talk more on that um, so that we really, we're finally getting, I think, a little more interesting <coughs> conversation and education around um, what actually we're asking for and what that entails and why. Right. Most of the things that happen of interest, I think, are with you guys with Rich Rain and yeah. those no, actually. I thought that might be a good starting there? point because, sure. you know, there's some new information that we really, some of yeah. us have Yeah, and I'll, have I'll open it up and then Jared will fill it in. Um, yep. We were at the select board meeting in Concord a week ago. Um, they uh, suggested that we would connect with Concord DPW Director Rich Rain, so we did that immediately, and um, his response was just as immediate. Um, we met with him last week. and. It's really been a great offer of collaboration and support. Um, so Jared's been having ongoing conversations with Rich and Gail Engineering and Brian and I haven't even talked to you since your last conversation. So I guess I'll listen. Go ahead. Good. Um, I, I'm, first, I'm going to start just by thanking them publicly, Man. both Rich and um, Chris. and Chris Albright. Um, I picked uh, Rich's brain for at least an hour and 45 minutes over the last Just week. Just for clarity, uh, uh, Rich Rain is, is DPW, DPW Director, and, director and Chris is the, the town engineer. Town engineer. Town engineer. Yeah. Um, so we, we met in person uh, last week, um, and then we had a phone conversation yesterday uh, with Gail, and then today, again, I had another phone conversation with Rich. Um, so basically what it's around, just starting with the access road, what they're doing right now is they're trying to prove out the price. The 1.2 million uh, is that is that a correct is that a right price? Because it's well known that you know Gail when they did the the report, um, they didn't have access to the underneath the pavement and testing and everything. So what Rich and his guys are doing is they're doing a design for us right now. Um, there, if you I was at the high school today, they were there surveying and everything. They were there all week. Um, and what that basically entails uh, is a number of things. They're looking, you know, they're doing a survey, looking at the grade, utility, looking at trees, curbing, uh, curbing um, developing a base. And then what they're doing is they're taking a piece of that pavement and they're send it in, sending it in for testing to see what's underneath there. But the, again, the biggest thing they're doing though is the design. This design is probably saving us a hundred plus thousand dollars, maybe a hundred and Ten hundred and twenty thousand dollars that they're doing for us right now. Um, so yesterday, again, just talking about the access road, we had a conversation with Gail. They were able to ask Gail a number of questions, how they came up with this number, um, and then Rich is out there trying to prove it. Um, but uh, after talking to him now three times, um, he thinks the numbers are reasonable. Um, it might come in a little under because of what, they, what they're doing right now with the survey and everything. They're going to have more information than Gail had, um, but the base of what Gail gave them um, is, uh, is, is holding true. Um, so, so that's really good news. What they're also doing for the parking um, is they're also doing a, a, a design for the parking too. What they, what, what they're trying, were trying to understand was proving, the de, if you remember the de December 13th price that Gail gave us was about $486,000, and then it went up to 790. Mm -hmm. So uh, Gail gave rich clarification on what that was, and that included, you know, the lighting, the charging stations, etc. cetera. Um, so, which Rich again said that seems reasonable. So they are doing the design on that. Um, we have an open chain of emails with Gail, Rich, Chris, myself, Ian, Brian, and Laurie. We've been going back and forth today, getting any questions um, we need answers uh, answered. And Gail also has been extremely receptive of, uh, of my calls and questions. And every week or every other week, they would call me and say, hey, you need anything? How's it going? Um, so it's been it's been great. Um, so we do not think that we will have the cost estimates by next Monday. We could have a ballpark, but they, Rich thinks they will absolutely have the cost estimates uh, by April 8th. Um, but as of right now, um, everything seems reasonable according to them. 
Wow. Can we just echo that huge shout out of thanks? That is incredible that they would step in and help us this much, especially this last minute and to be so all in all week. So Right, the call we Huge. took from Rich, we met with Rich Thursday, and he said, so when would you need this? And I said, <laughs> I'm due back at the select board April 1st, but I could probably be okay by the 8th. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> and then literally tracked us down Friday night into Saturday and said, I need to talk to you this weekend because here's what I'm offering. But I need to know over the weekend because I have to clear my guys from the minute Monday starts. Wow. So we talked to them Saturday afternoon and it just, you know, I think too what we all know is that, you know, we can review the numbers. They're confirming Gail, but they're also going to have more information. So there's going to be some room to more comfortably decide what contingencies we need and things like that, which was, as you know, some of what was not easily determined at that point. Right. Um, it's just been amazing. So the, um, the 1.5 includes design, mm -hmm. because presumably we would hire design, the hire. 1.2. I'm sorry, no, the 1.5, the whole, I mean the 2 million it's article, two, oh, the two, article for yeah. 2 million, sorry, I'm singing. Um, and the design they're doing, is it comprehensive enough? I mean, I, it's, it's under a real, yeah. you know, fire drill, yeah. recognizing that, but comprehensive enough to avoid some of that more. I think for the road, it probably most likely is. The parking, I would say definitively it is for the road. Right. That's and great. That's true. For the parking, yes, there is about 70000 in soft costs for the parking that we'll probably um, need to dip into a little bit, but for, for the access road, yes, it is yeah. uh, that comprehensive. The complexity of the parking, with the drainage, drainage and the landfill and all of that. I think he was pretty open to say it was going to be a challenge right now, yeah. but he's giving us another another certain layer of information. Yeah, for sure. and assurance of yeah. what we yeah. want to do. You know, some of the other feedback he's given us uh, is that the order and way in which we might approach mm -hmm. this if, if we weren't to do it all, which I guess loops into some of Carlisle's mm -hmm. comments that we received yesterday asking us to consider splitting the article. Um, Rich is very clear that if we do the roadway and then build a parking lot later, we're going to tear up a lot of that roadway to accommodate drainage for the parking lot or whatever else needs to be built around the parking lot. So he's helping us see the order matters and that there are certain options that make sense and are certain options that wouldn't. So it's so another value. So the drainage, uh, given that comment, goes down to the main driveway of the high school, the loop road? Well, it's got to go somewhere, wherever they right. decide. I mean, it'll, be, I mean, it'll, it'll have to be permanent. Well, some of the talk had been to run it over to the big basins in yeah, the middle I, there for okay, the BD. So that, yeah. That's the obvious suggestion, mm -hmm. um, but nobody's been able to scope that out yet. That will require mm -hmm. more in-depth design work. And has he talked at all, on, I know that cutting up the road for drainage or those kinds of things for parking um, would likely happen, but also the just that heavy equipment up on the new roads for sure. kind of possible damage and that kind yeah. of thing. I mean, it seems yeah. to me that... I mean, the first thing they did was come over and, you know, look at the scope of work that they thought. You know, can you just mill it and be done? And he's like, we were there for five minutes and that wasn't an option. So, um, yes, I'm sure you would not want to build a new road and then you're putting big equipment back on it to build the park. Yeah. Um, so. so when you say mill it, that means putting little holes in the ground? No, just a surface and level. Surface surface. And then surface. Yeah, yeah. That, it's beyond yeah. that. It needs a bigger repair than that. So, so they, they said basically that's yeah, not, 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 not a bill. Um, as one of the not Concord residents on this mm -hmm. committee, is the town of Concord going to charge us for some of this work they're doing? He asked us uh, to help cover a little bit of overage on some things that he's <coughs> going to need to accommodate for this week for a few thousand dollars. So no. So that's... Yeah. 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 Along the same lines, just right. process question, where is the town manager in these um, So Rich has stayed very close to the, Chris. Um, part of the other message that we got was that if we get to a place where we're actually going forward, we could consider uh, putting our projects on their bids, um, which came with Chris's blessing. So and then we just manage the cash flow behind the scene, which we do with bids that we put out for both districts. So um, another really that's great positive offer for sure. That could certainly save if we're, may, if yes. we're bidding a road at the same time that they're bidding road work, right? Well, and you have to assume with the scale at which they're going to bid out road right. work, uh, it's going to cost them a bit less, right? 
a bit. I know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, one off driveway versus one of yeah. you know several miles and yeah. around Concord. I would think that that would be a that's significant yeah. savings. Yeah. Wow. So that's all great news. So that's um, great. So the timeline on it is that we presumably three four days before town meeting starts we get. Uh, sort of a more definitive or three or four minutes before yeah. The yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said minutes. Oh, you, you said, said minutes. I thought I said <laughs> Sounds like you'd be right up against it. I think I'm maybe right up against we, it. I think we'll yeah. have a little more information than we have now on April first. Yeah. Um, but he's he, we should have something before April eighth or okay. minutes before we go on. Before so, we go. So the point I mean, just to make sure I understand the point is to get a better number to ask. For the article town meeting, if possible, yes, that's, that's really. I think yeah. I mean, and, and this is all, right. I think what happened was that um, in the conversation at select board meeting was, can we confirm this is like some of the pushback, from if I remember, it was like well, it went up so much. Is that really right. realistic? We really, really have to go with this right, right, number, right. and the suggestion was to, to get in touch with Rich Rain and, and see yeah. if he could give some better sense. And he, he's done. He's well beyond that. beyond what we thought he would do. Right. Because the design he's doing, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, the design he's doing is just giving us more, much more information mm -hmm. than it would have cost if Gail was to do that, or whoever was to do that, it would have been significantly more than the fifty thousand that Gail, um, the Gail cost. So to Mary's point and question, ideally we have a better, tighter sense of the number, and ideally we've reduced the cost and some of the design number dollars that are in that sure. number. Yeah. And do we then um, so? I guess where I was getting at is do we then amend the article number or is this to be able to tell people, you know, it's it's a not to exceed two million but we only expect it to be in this range? I think that's, that's gonna what be we the have discussion to we're gonna have. We're gonna meet right I right before meeting right time. before the meeting. <laughs> I think yeah, we'll have to have it. The other suggestion I have we do back at the select board on Monday night. Um, they didn't take a position yet. I would like to catch them up and then suggest they may wait to take a position until Rich has completed his work, what he can do for us, yeah. so yeah. everyone's well informed. Right. Wow. So do we want to talk about the... So then the, the other question. Carla? Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah, because I don't know that, I don't know that, is that, do you feel that that's completely settled and conquered, that the selectmen are behind the... No, so, oh, no, definitely not. No, that's what I'm, so, yeah, no. so it's a no. valid yeah, discussion. Oh, absolutely. Yes. No. Absolutely. Yes, yes. yes. Um, so so there were multiple questions. Why don't, why don't so we actually, up. for the public purpose, summarize what exactly is being asked? Well, we have copies. Right? Oh, oh, okay. Because I think also yeah, Carla. Yeah, I, yeah, think I, I, think, I mean, basically, Con Carla, the town yes, leaders in Carlisle are saying that's they, they're expressing a preference to have the two articles, one for parking and one for paving, because they see it as th these as two very separate projects for separate reasons. The, the uh, paving the roadway and the lighting is a safety issue, and the parking is not. So that, I mean, that's kind of it in a nutshell. I don't think that's really news to any of us. Right. right. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Other than the fact that here we are now. Yeah. You know, we decided on one, and I don't know what that even means to us. I guess it depends on what happens in Concord on Monday, right? Or town meeting. Yeah. And, yeah, and eventually yeah, town course, meeting. You know, yeah, but Monday will be obviously very important. Yeah, because, I mean, Carlisle has to do what Concord does, but, mm -hmm. um, Yeah, we each have to do what the other does, basically. Right, <laughs> Yeah. Right. So, well, and also the, the point that Rich Rain brought up about the timing, I think, becomes more relevant here. I mean, our discussion before, when we originally discussed is this going to be two articles or one, it was yeah. primarily about the, the, the question of driving machines <laughs> over a new road came into play, but it was primarily about commitment to both. Um, but with his advice <coughs> that the timing is so important, I think that adds another factor here that we just have to mm -hmm. a, acknowledge. Sorry, what do you, is you? Our, so Richard's point about timing was that it's possible that if you did just the road now, but then came back to do parking, you'd have to dig up part of that road, and therefore that's not a real efficient thing to do. Oh, no, I'm sorry, because I thought we talked about that way back. Right, and we okay. did somewhat, okay. only okay. that it's kind of being highlighted now. So sure. I just think, sure. okay. as we talk about, so 
since we're bringing up the question again, I think it's an interesting question, partially because it's come up from various different groups, both in yeah. Carlisle and yeah, in Concord. It's come up Absolutely. many times. Yes. Um, and I think it's very possible that it could come up on the floor, even if we don't do anything yeah. about it. Right. Um, it. So I think, that I just want to make sure that we're addressing all of the factors and issues, which is, are they two separate questions? You know, one being safety, one being all of the issues around parking, and then the timing that plays in, and. And are, and are there other factors? Well, I the guess, timing is, is about co cost, right? The timing it's is really about cost, not, exactly. Okay. Yeah, okay. it yeah. is. Because if we do one and then have to it's dig it up to do the other, uh -huh. that's extra cost, right? Uh -huh. Well, so there may be savings in doing them both at the same time. Um, I would also make the argument that the parking is not devoid of safety issues. Uh, we've got kids parking on Laurel Street. Mm -hmm in the winter time, uh, walking to and from their cars in the dark. Um, and, uh, you know, that's not going to stop if we don't. On well, a lot of other illegal parking. Yeah, if we I, th don't I think the hard part parking. about it is that if you are not directly impacted by this parking mm -hmm. issue, it's a very hard thing to imagine that it's a real life problem. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, we've done several of these uh, presentations with the thought that we would be able to share the depth of this issue and, and the impact that it has on the high school community. Um, but, uh, you know, the first time Bob and I went, it was one person, and then Joanna and I had three. So, you know, there's just so much competition for attention, and I think that people yeah. are, if they're not being impacted by it, they just mm -hmm. don't have the time to come and hear about it. Yeah. Well, also, I think there rema remains a hope that the hardship will drive a lot of behavior change mm -hmm. and that uh, yes. uh, overlooks the fact that we've had four years uh, and we haven't seen evidence of <coughs> behavior change. That hasn't been for lack of effort. It hasn't been for lack of hardship. Um, right. And so four years begins to become pretty compelling evidence that uh, this is a problem that isn't going away. And from the larger community's perspective, it'd be nice to drive change with a shortage of parking at the high school. But that's not what's happening. Uh, what we're doing is simply uh, seeing behavior the same, but with lots of stressors added to it. Um, I think that other school committee members' experience is like mine. And, and that is that when we talk one by one with families, we don't have good, genuine solutions to offer them. Looked at systemically, it would be wonderful to say, step back, take the pain, more people should get on a bus. But then when we hear about real lives, real families, real students, it frankly just doesn't work. And if it doesn't, I have kids in that high school, I, I couldn't make an argument that it, I could make it work for them to do what they wanted to do with, with sports, with, uh, with uh, clubs, with jobs, with family responsibilities. I couldn't drive that level of change in my own family, and I'm not seeing other families able to do it either. So, to your point, when you have a child at the high school, the problem looks. You get it. You get it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's not to say there isn't going to be some pain about getting a solution, but uh, right. the solution is not more of same. I think uh, you've said that very articulately, Laura. Yeah. So you've solved many a problem around here. This is not one this of them. This is not one of them. Yeah. No. <laughs> so where does that leave us, just in terms of next steps and? Planning and do we need to decide anything tonight? Or what I think we, we to do? Well, the only way this could change would be a uh, amendment on the floor. Sure. No, no, no. Um, okay. And, uh, you know, we had a long conversation about this with these very issues um, months ago and no. uh, came to the conclusion we did. And I, for one, don't see that anything has changed. Uh, certainly wouldn't sway my viewpoint of it, I, you know, and, and just to sort of add on to what Cora was saying, you know, we've, we've tried a number of things, and when the day is done, the behavioral change that the district is responsible for is only related to the students. And this is not just a student issue, it's a parent issue too. We can't, we are not in the business of changing behavior away from the people that come to school. Um, and I think in some cases that seems to be what we're being asked to try to do. Um, and, uh, you know, I see the toll that it takes on central administration, building administration, and students. 
Um, so it's, you know, I really think that, you know, we've, we've tried both here and in our informational sessions to drive this on, and I'm sure our presentation at town meeting will do the same thing. And, you know, I hope that, that, that people see that, even though we do a lot of things in Concord that don't affect everybody in Concord. Yeah, we support those. And I think, I hope this is one of those times that the community understands that, yes, in any given year, this is really relates to a class and a half of high school students and their families. But if you're here raising your kids and bringing them through school, it's going to affect you for a year and a half, if not longer, um, depending on how many kids. So, and, and you know, there was plenty of parking when we had the old high school. So it wasn't an issue for the people who didn't experience it then. Um, and, you know, we face this stuff all the time in Concord, not just about schools, but about other, other issues. And, you know, we're generally pretty good. And I, my hope is that uh, this will prevail at town meeting for those same very reasons. So what I'm trying to get at is, in terms of process, we, we've taken the position that we think it should be one article. There's a meeting with the Concord Selectman on Monday night. Right. If they don't think it should be one article, what what happens next in terms of our meeting schedule and town meeting? And so we, my understanding is you, based on they all can't, that, you cannot add an article now. No, no, no. So the only option is to adjust what so we, we have. So we would have to, on the, the yeah. town meeting. At the meeting. The town meeting. Right. Meeting so basically to, somebody could amend it on the floor. Or we could, or potentially. We could, right? Right? Yeah. Someone well, else we, could try. We also are contemplating looking at, you know, amending the number if we find that it's meaningful. Right. I mean, yes. so those things, but none of, oh, that can only happen right. on the floor. And I think that. So that's it. Yeah, and I think with, you know, Carlisle and depending on what happens with other, the other committees in Concord, um, is just trying to educate as best we can why we would have proposed them together. And we've gotten even more information that makes makes uh, makes me feel more confident that doing it together is the best way, the most cost-effective way, the reasonable way in terms of addressing how to approach it. Um, and, you know, we have a conversation, sort of, you know, we'll, we'll have it with the select board, maybe we'll have it again Carlisle, and then um, you know, a town meeting. Just two, well, one at least other point. Um, through Nick, Nick's email to us on behalf of the Climate Action Advisory Board, mm -hmm. um, where I'll be tomorrow night with them, they're considering taking a position. And the, as you saw in the email, the question was about whether the committee would commit to the sustainability and the offset of greenhouse gases. Um, and Nick, you can speak for yourself here probably better than I can speak for you to tell us what you're asking. Well, um, uh, Nick, just for the record. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yep. Nick Pappas, uh, Chair of the Climate Action Advisory Board. And for background, I was also on the uh, uh, Comprehensive Long Range Plan Committee with Wally. And um, you know, in particular, in that committee, I carved out the space of transportation to work on. So um, I did hear some comments at the last select board about, you know, the school buses and, you know, why aren't people using the school buses or something. And I did say at the select board, and I think it's something we have to keep in mind, the town has a massive transportation problem, an inefficient transportation system. Part of that affects the high school and whether or not school buses are used well and whether or not people have to use cars and, you know, I just don't think that this issue, personally, I don't think this issue is the place, this article is the place to work the town's transportation problem. And long run, the transportation may look very different in town. I hope it does. And I'm going to stay involved in it, try to help do that. But anyway, on to this article. Um, yes, the, the Climate Action Advisory Board's concern here is a narrow concern, and that is that parking generates, driving generates greenhouse gases. And for every gallon of gas, which weighs eight gallons, 20 pounds, or weighs eight pounds, 20 pounds of carbon dioxide are produced. Hmm. Because every carbon uh, atom combines with two oxygen atoms from the air, not part of the gas, and weighs more. 
Anyway, uh, I did some calculations in a spreadsheet, and it turns out if you assume someone is driving to that parking lot and they drive round trip 10 miles, probably a low estimate, their car gets 25 miles to the gallon, they drive 180 school days a year, they come up with something like 60% of a metric ton per vehicle using the parking lot, times 104, 107, 104 parking spaces. <coughs> And what we're suggesting is that uh, this would, could be, I think, a non-issue for uh, the Climate Action Advisory Board if the school committee could take a, make a commitment to do something to offset greenhouse gases generated by this additional parking. And um, you know, I have a suggested wording for that. Um, I was just working on here at the beginning of the meeting, which would be something like, uh, just a second. Whereas any additional parking spaces at the high school will allow people to drive more cars to the school and thereby generate additional greenhouse gas, the school department will implement an offset program intended to reduce greenhouse gases by an equivalent or greater amount. The precise nature of the program will be defined with the support of the Climate Action Advisory Board and the Conference Sustainability Director prior to the start of construction of the parking lot. So we're not suggesting that you nail down exactly how you would do this right now because I think that would be premature. If you did something like that, I'd love to see the students participate in yeah. figuring out what the offset program would be so that they could understand what the impact is of driving in general and so that they could participate in designing something. But that could be a great win for mm -hmm. everyone. Absolutely. So that's mm -hmm. just along the lines of what we're suggesting. And we will be discussing this. Laurie's coming to the meeting tomorrow and we will be discussing this and possibly taking a position on the uh, article at town meeting. So, oh, go ahead. If I might, can you just speak to how how achievable you think that uh, goal would be on the school's part? I, I think it's very achievable. I mean, you can go out in the market and buy offsets. <laughs> you, you know, for somewhere between forty and eighty dollars a metric ton, you can buy a carbon dioxide, uh, a CO two gas offset. So, and you're collecting three or four hundred dollars a year in parking fees. I don't remember. Three hundred per. You know, I mean, your money's already flowing. <laughs> You could use some of that money to do it, but that's just if you use that approach. So that right. would be the, the the fastest, easiest to do thing. What it's I don't like about that one is there's not a lot of student involvement. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. That's and right. what they can do in this community yeah. to offset greenhouse yeah. gases. Yeah. So, so I mean, you know, that's why I, I tried to word this in a way that gives time. You know, that this construction, whatever you do, I don't think construction in the parking lot is going to start for quite a few months, and mm -hmm. hopefully by next school year. Need to be rolling along early in the year. Mm -hmm. And I guess my, my question was very similar to what Court just said, and I would follow it up a little more because, and first, I, I want to thank you for coming with this suggestion because, as someone who has struggled with this, I feel like this is such a just a perfect solution here. Um, and I would be the first one to say, perfect, this is great, let's do it. But I do want to understand the achievability. And so I would look to Lori to say, is this, this goal, is it something that you have? And Jared, both of you, enough of an understanding of to say, yes, we can commit to this. Is this yeah. realistic? Is it something yeah. we can put together? I asked Kate Hanley that at 10 o'clock this okay. morning. <laughs> <laughs> so we're circling around a little bit. Yeah, I, I, I don't I want to the, commit you to something. The, the reasonableness of the request, Kate said, absolutely, all the work we're doing and the goals you saw and the plans we're going to make are going to lead us right towards this. So I think what I'm hearing from Nick, and he does a great job of help you know talking numbers in a way I've never associated so I think we would want to be sure the kids are part of that mm -hmm. level of the discussion mm -hmm. um, so I think there's just a huge it's another round of opportunity for us in terms of the way in which we build our plans to make sure that's part of the, the process and the opportunities we give to the kids I, I would suggest politically that if you offered this as an amendment on the floor and explained the reason that the school department supports it as an educational opportunity, right. that would be very helpful for the residents. Right, I think yep. so too. And mm -hmm. we do that yeah. right up front. Well, I, this is my last meeting here, and so I feel obligated to ask a question about, uh, when you talk about the schools, do you mean the Concord schools? The or high school. The, the high, school the high school or both? The high school. Okay. So do you think it's achievable? Uh, my question was more sort of Kate's opinion that we could achieve it for just yeah. the high school? Yeah. yeah. Can I ask Without money. 
Well, yeah, not, well, not we talked about option, that. Yeah, yeah, just buying. There's yeah. no guarantee of a funding <laughs> source. We, right. we know there is one there, but we've also had multiple conversations on how people Other think that money might be used. Right. Um, so we got really energized because it led right into the planning we're doing for all the efforts and so opportunities. We some of what was on that list that we were talking been, about yeah. could actually feed into this yeah, goal. Absolutely. Okay. And anyone who gets a parking space is on the committee. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> in, your, in your calculations, again, what, so what are the 104 spaces, how much more, um, what would be the offset cost? Did you figure that out roughly? Uh, uh, yeah, if it's 60% of, it's, it's of a metric ton for a car, those calculations. Yeah. And so 60%, somewhere between 40 and $80 a ton. So you're talking like 25 to 50 bucks. It's not big money. From a practical standpoint, you could you could buy offsets on the market in the short term right. and do something else in the longer term. Right. Right. Worst case, if we come up with a great long term plan and we work a time frame, we do that and we implement our long term. Plan. And that would be about ten of the parking spaces, the piece for the parking spaces. I know. Um, just uh, in sort of a discussion about this, and one of the things that that I think is, uh, is true in this case. Um, a lot of these cars that we would be parking are already being driven to schools. They're just being parked somewhere yeah, else. And then the other thing, and I think this is sort of an offset of doing the parking, um, for those people that aren't going to have their kids park somewhere illegally all day, um, they will drive their kids to school, they will drive home, and they will drive back, and they will drive home. So you're cutting emissions by 50% for those people who would be able to drive who don't have to drive. Right. Just throw that out there. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> no, it, yeah. yeah. I, it, it, what I would do, actually, if I were if I were a czar, is I would <laughs> apply this to all park student parking at the high school. Because the issue isn't this, it's in a sense, the issue isn't this new parking. Right. Yeah. It's the parking. It's, it's right. Yeah. 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 So I would extend it to all of it at some point. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, and I didn't bring that up to disagree with the idea. <laughs> okay. I think it's a good idea. Thanks. Yeah. So logistically, though, that would have to be an amendment at the Carlisle town meeting also. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right, whatever, if we passed, amend it and pass it in Congress, right. we then have to amend, amend it exactly it. the same way in oh. Carlisle. I, I will send the wording to Bob, or mm -hmm. I said, okay, yeah. I'll send a word document before I leave here to you, your email, and uh, just, I'm not confident to say this, but I don't think you'd be allowed by the moderator to split any article into two articles. No, you're, you're correct. Right. Yeah. I think you can make the money smaller, but not bigger. You are yes. right. That's That's correct. correct. Yeah. 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 Definitely. I, I Thank you so we much. Should, we should also um, just Thank let's, you. If, Thank you. let's say that amendment were made and for some reason it failed, right. uh, that we would commit to do that. Anyway, so yeah. that, you know, it doesn't have to be. We will commit to do that regardless of whether or not, whether or not that piece the of the piece of process passes. Yes. Right. Yes. <coughs> Sorry, which amendment? The greenhouse gas offset. The offset. No, no, I got that. You mean if it wasn't, if it didn't pass? If that, it's if that amendment it. itself about the, if we did do, if we about do language for an amendment to the article. For greenhouse gas, happen. and for some reason it didn't pass, can't imagine it wouldn't. Right. But if it didn't pass, we would still commit as a committee a quo, to do not. that. Yeah, right. so right. Exactly. for clarification, splitting this into two articles okay. can't happen anyway. So to Carlisle's That's request or that kind of Right, if someone, even exactly. someone from the floor can't make it two different votes, right? They could, yeah, they someone could move, amend could move to make things. the, right. No. no, but they can't move two different things. Somebody could amend to make it smaller to cover only one of the projects. That's the but way then they once correct. that passes, you can't have another vote on another project. That's what I was going to Right? Sounds true. You can't burn in a citizen article. No. No. On the day of town so. meeting. Yeah, so we actually cannot vote on both as two separate no. items. If it gets amended, it gets amended to one of them. By virtue of a number. By virtue, By virtue of, of a number. number. Correct. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, my understanding. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And it's much more clear. <laughs> yeah. Right. So my one other thing, um, based on some of the feedback we've gotten, just I thought it was worth us having the conversation. You know, we 
we're getting feedback, especially in Concord, that there's a big ask on the table. There's two big asks yeah. on the table. Yeah. Yeah. And we talked about that, I think, earlier on. I want to be sure we acknowledge that we're very aware of that. And I wrestled with it over the last couple of days. The, pro the road needs to get done. So I just, I don't know that there's going to be a, a good time to bring it. So if it doesn't get done now, we're going to bring it back. And at that point, depending where we are with the middle school, then is it up against a middle school project versus right. a million and a half for a design. So I, I just, we're very aware of that. We left the select board last week, Joanne and I humming about that on the way to the car. It is a lot all at once. We completely see that. Um, I don't and, and Carl know how. And Carl's doing the same thing. Yeah. Yes, no, you know, we, have, we have two pretty big I know, chunks I, on I, the table too. So I know. it's hard. And I think part of the point I had was the community has to weigh in and help us with the timing. And the only way to have that is a public discussion, which we're pretty actively having. Um, is to put it out. So mm -hmm. it just feels like that needed to get said. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the good time is mm -hmm. for the high school road work to get finished and right. parking, you know, that I would have done yesterday if I could. But um, mm -hmm. it, it just doesn't seem like there is a moment in time where there isn't going to be something else. Mm -hmm. so. Right. so I just wanted all of us to discuss uh, whether we ought to at least uh, pencil in and, and joint meeting next week sometime. Given that we're going to have news from the select board meeting, and there may other maybe other news as far as numbers and so forth. And it, you know, I'm just it's just trying to churn the money. There you go. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. That's right. You want more flowers? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Another pot of flowers. But, but I, no. I think that's what I was trying to get out earlier. Is like, what what could we do in that meeting? Yeah, well, I don't I, know that we can know, do it. Um, you know, what, we can do much. That's and we can't do not that just I don't before want to we're going to meet That's just cool. before town meeting anyway. We should just meet with enough time. It's just that it would go out to the public earlier, whatever True. we, if we have any if kind of. If we had any information, but we don't know that we're going to have anything yep. for Rich by a certain and what we, have, we can't really ask for it. It's going to be a given paper. Monday. It's no, I mean, I'm just leaning over to we don't even know what we're going to have for Monday. He's right. doing no. as much as he can, as fast as he can, but, right. you know, I... And you'll know on Monday afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so we stayed the course. Yeah. We did right. right here. Our next posted meeting is Tuesday, April 9th. Which is going to get edited to the 8th. Yeah. The 8th, Monday before we yeah. sync up with the articles on town meeting. And do we have right. time for that? We were going to suggest six, but that could be up for discussion. I imagine the Concord Committee might need some time to. I think we put it in at five. We might. Five. I was going to say, yeah. Okay. We, yeah. I mean, Actually, that's for the region or for be helpful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Maybe worst case, five for Concord and five thirty for the. I think we could do Concord five. And yeah. Well, in case we. Since it's town meeting and you have to park at the high school, you guys are going to carpool, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're going to ride our bikes, Christine. In the we'll dark. That's what we should have. Nice spring day from Carpool. <laughs> so, um, five o'clock. So, yeah. five o'clock. Is that for everybody? Five o'clock? Or Concord, five o'clock? Join at five and Concord at five thirty. No, other way around. Other way around. Concord first, Concord so that they don't have to show up until five thirty. Yeah. Yep. Five and five. Seven. 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 Oh, we'll have park. Find a Okay. All good on this. Yeah. Yeah. So we go on to. Uh, so I'm sorry. This so is going to be Monday night. Do you? Do you? Yes. Yeah. 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 Do you want to have? Do you want to, Lori, or do we want to respond somehow to the Carlisle message? I mean, I'm happy to talk to them, but yeah, we should probably should. Re should. I feel like we, we should want respond to respond officially, probably. Who did it go to? Uh, Bob sent a nice email yesterday saying we were going to talk tonight um, to at least let them know we acknowledge receipt of the memo. Um, and they suggest that they can obviously speak to the two Kala members of the regional school committee, but you know, if you prefer, that'd like, be nice. I think to have a yeah. formal response. Oh, that's fine. Yep. Yeah, if you, can, if you can respond on, on our behalf, yep. saying okay. we can't actually. So sorry. Split it. And yes, and secondly, what we're oh. learning from DPW collaboration, and thirdly, what we're learning from uh, Nick and the recommendation. 
organizations coming forth, all of which um, are connected. Let me be clear. I think the selectmen and the finance committee and Carlisle understand that they that it can't be split at this time. Okay. Okay. But they wanted to be clear that that was their preference because they see these as two different projects. Right. So okay. it's, it's a it's more of a message. A message. <coughs> yeah. So. Which is consistent. Yeah. Is your yeah. feedback we've heard? Yeah. Is your war closed in Carlisle? Oh yeah. Oh, let's see. So. I think so. I mean, I'm just. Otherwise, they could be completed some of that. Did they close it last week? Oh, they must have. Because it's not till. Oh, I think they, they might be closing it tonight. And that's what I was thinking. Yeah, they're, they're still looking at articles. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. That's yeah. April 29th. Okay. Because our. I have another scheduled question. Are we, do we have an April 9th meeting on the calendar? Yeah, that's going to turn into the April 8th meeting okay. that we were just talking about. Okay. So, okay. Mary, are you going to do that on? Um, I heard Bob was going to do that. Bob was going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Laurie and I will, will yeah. uh, jointly uh, work on that. <laughs> He's confirming. I'm like, no, no, no. That's not what I got. Thank you. Okay, on to new business. Yes, thank you. The EDCO agreement. Yeah, so we are members of EDCO, which is one of the collaboratives that we belong to. Um, I sit on the board. Uh, I think we have representation from one of you as well that gets appointed every it's year. It's supposed to be me. Yeah, it, it's I a lot of, it's a mixed group of superintendents and school committee. Um, the, re the agreement had been updated last summer, and I'll admit that I forgot to bring it to you, which had its uh, benefit because it had to get tweaked again after the state weighed in. Perfect. So I skipped a step and ended up ahead of my colleagues somehow. <laughs> didn't seem correct but so what you have in front of you is the up-to-date draft that needs to be approved I will summarize verbally for you the changes since you wouldn't necessarily be able to spot them um, <coughs> the original set of changes were to update the date uh, Winchester pulled out of the collaborative so that needed to get removed throughout the document um, we added some wording on responsibility of the collaborative when that school school committee or charter school board became a member to Article 10. These are all very minor. I would have done something more elaborate for you. Um, we added uh, another couple of subgroups to the discrimination clause. I believe it's the pregnancy uh, subgroup that had not been there prior. And then the state in January had given feedback um, to tweak very minor wordings. So in the preamble, we're removing May 19th, 2015, as most recently amended on, so it's literally a phrase that's coming off. Um, the governance article changing wording from voting member of to liaison, important to the state, for, I'm sure important reason. And then the approval dates uh, now need to change from September 27th to the 17th. So we're hoping you can approve this and then I can return it to uh, EDCO and the state then signs off and we've got an up-to-date agreement. The precipitating factor to all of this was Winchester's withdrawal. The rest is a little bit of housekeeping throughout. So it's on for a vote tonight unless you want to delay it. But My only question, if, um, one was what's changed obviously, other than that, is there anything in here that has been a problem for us in the past? No, we've had a... Um, some discussion of what happens when members pull out, and that's actually been happening at the case board meetings too. Um, when different groups stop participating, what's the trickle down impact to that? So there's some ongoing discussion there, but nothing definitive or that changed anything here. Okay. Um, we're just noting that Winchester is no longer a member. Just broadly speaking, do we utilize all of the services that they bring to bear, or are we more uh, specific about how we pull um, services? We're, we heavily use the job alike groups. EDCO is a very uh, fascinating collaborative model. is the most eclectic collaborative I've part ever seen, frankly, with a big, heavy, positive, productive strand of professional development, um, another strand of special ed programs, Another strand of what we had a very large contract in Boston on ELL and migrant population. We don't have that anymore. Really, 
a creative collaborative to fill niches where they saw them and become vehicles to provide services where they were needed. So we're still very much in that mode. Um, professional development by far is our biggest use of them. Um, they're the ones who provided the ideas. Ideas is a portion of EDCO, which is what we've been relying on for our cultural competency consultants. Um, and you know, using, using that as an incredible resource. Um, Andrew tapped one of their programs and bought brought some kids to, the, to a, um, similar to the ADL work that just happened. Another program they offered where kids went to participate. So it's our heavy usage is the professional development and the job-alike opportunities. There's job-alike groups for a wide range of positions that um, Kristen goes regularly to hers and really gives us opportunities to stay connected with other districts. And one thing they offer which I found uh, of help in the past is a school committee member round table. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, maybe eight times in the year, nine times at the most. Yeah. Probably not in the summer. But uh, it usually has eight, 10, 12 school committee members from surrounding towns and just common issues are discussed. And you know, mm -hmm. I think that's something that one of us might want to Are they the ones continue. that do charting the course too? They're one of the ones that does yeah. it, yes. Correct. So even though very dominant in their mission statement here is uh, student services, that's not what we look to them for. We will occasionally send students to their um, special education programs if it's the right fit. Um, we don't use, it's a smaller it's a op set of opportunities, a smaller set of programs than CASE. CASE is our longer term larger you know partnership in general but that doesn't mean anything about echo's quality you know we look around for whatever the best fit is so we vote on it later it's on yep. as an okay. agenda item later thank you okay thank you that, uh, next is the uh, superintendent evaluation for 2019 and uh, i guess we got to yeah, I, mean, I, I realized it was the last time we were all going to be in the same room, <laughs> and so I just thought we'd get a conversation started on process and if there was a who was going to do what discussion before people split off in different directions, since I was making the assumption you seven would be the folks doing the evaluation. So oh, we definitely the should be. Should be. No. <laughs> no. That, all all I wanted was to get it onto the radar. Yes. We also talked about yes. the differences in our evaluations last year That's and correct. getting some yeah. training or yeah. discussion about that, which we have not done. Yeah, I wanted to revisit whether that um, was still something we wanted to do. In the past, I've done some of the training. Yeah. MAS will do it, too, and they'll come out to us. Um, so maybe we can get someone to come out. And no, I don't think it's too late at all. Well, our timing generally has been, we've hit um, the first or second um, meeting in June as being finished, and oftentimes, it's sort of May is individual meetings um, with Lori and then doing the superintendent evaluation and then giving it to some said soul who puts it together. <laughs> I think it's been me the last few years. So. Yeah. 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 Does anybody think you <laughs> you're not going to have anything to do in May? I'm going to go find my family in May. Um, anyway, so it, that's generally when the timing has been. So we probably, if we could squeeze something out, I would recommend we wait till after town meeting. It's not that far away, but maybe we could pull off. Yeah, and some late we could have someone in. Yeah, it'd be great. Maybe it would just be hard scheduling wise. It's probably the hardest. Yeah, it's the hardest challenge. part of it. So. Yeah, it yeah. is. Um, well, I know, I, I mean, a, a few of us will be around still. Um, Wally, you and I are the ones with the most, I guess, experience. Actually, of those I'm away of us. in the last two weeks, maybe. Oh, good. I think I just volunteered myself. <laughs> just, 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 you, know, it's weird. <laughs> you know, sometimes you don't step forward, but everybody else steps back. <laughs> <laughs> I just volunteered. Oh, you did? Oh, oh thanks. Look what happened. <laughs> um, I mean, at the very least, if someone makes a couple phone calls to see or goes yeah. online and see what Edco has in. Do you yeah. want to work together on this? Thing? Let's work together, yeah. yeah, absolutely. We can coordinate. Can, can you call um, where you're going? <laughs> exactly. Um, no, we can do that. And and I think it makes sense. We're the ones who've been through this process before. Yeah. Um, 
And I think it would be great if we could get all of us together and make a very good point that we need to make sure we're all looking at these questions through the same lens. Yeah. Um, yes. And to be able to, to do it consistently. And I think we invite the new members uh, as well. That's what I was just going to say. Yeah. Yep. yep. Let's yeah. definitely do that. Which we'll hear about tonight. Exactly. Yeah. We should hear the results of the close race tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Polls are closed. Um, Probably the other point I would ask is if we could consider, we threw a staff survey in there at a pretty late hour last year. If you'd like to do that again, it's probably easier to turn that around if we plan it earlier or, like, <laughs> or <Rather later. laughs> just okay. determine when we're going to do it. Exactly. Um, there were some things we did as we went that proved maybe now that we all know, we could schedule out ahead of time. Yeah. Would we what? like to do that again this year because you and I can work we can on how to get that coordinate it, right, so exactly. At least off our plate. Probably use the same survey pretty much. Yeah, I think so. Does yeah. that make sense? Did everybody it, did it feel, that. does everybody feel like that's a good idea? I know, yeah, it's it's true. True. Um, did, Was there okay. more information that you would have liked feedback on from that survey, or was there stuff that you felt was redundant? I you know, know, let me look at it again. Yeah. A year later it might say the other thing. It might it might be things I'd be curious about that we mm -hmm. didn't ask. Yeah. Because right. we were at a pretty high level last year. We right. were, yeah. It's been less than a year and just trying to get some feeling back. So a general feel. I should, we should look at it again. So I let's mean, do that. It was, a useful tool to you. Yeah, right. Which was actually, I was going to step back one step further and, and make sure, is that something that you'd be on board with again? Did you find it useful? It was useful. Um, I think, to your question, I think we should look at it we again. We should look at it and see, yeah. It was very... Uh, Focus on culture and climate, which is still very, very important. But do we are we looking for other things? But there's a lot more that yeah. yeah, it's been going yeah. on this year. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. I can take the lead, or we can take the lead. Let's just kind of coordinate the logistics of when we need to do what. Um, I'm not so sure that I get to stay. Okay. <laughs> there's a lot of chit chat in Carla. Okay. Um, I would I wouldn't mind. You know, I, I'm not so sure when I'll know. Okay, but, but you um, need to be part of the process. Though. Yeah, yeah. Or you should yeah. be part yeah. of the evaluation yeah. process. So yeah, yeah. Okay, great. We'll take it and run with you, and I'll follow yeah. up with you so sure. we can kind of figure out a yeah. timeline. That was the goal for tonight. Just get it on the radar. Get it on the radar. It thank is. you. No, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> and once we figure out the date, I don't think we should plan it around Carlisle. But we should invite Carlisle yeah. to whatever this training I thing looks oh, like. Because we'll have yeah. this we, do, we do members. things differently there, which I think was yeah. reflected in the way out how I did it here. Right. And we should just. Sure. That's that a they great don't idea. have to be the same, but yeah, let's just idea. have a conversation well, about it. And to your point, whoever, you know, other people will be joining from yeah. Carlisle yeah. for next year. Yeah. So let's mm -hmm. invite all of them. I just don't, I think, that. trying to plan it around people who don't even. Exactly. Let's plan around, plan around this the seven of us yep. and then invite them also. Perfect. I'm putting them on my list. All right. Next is uh, assessment of the bus depot costs. So this is just also to put this on the radar. We've had conversations in other forums where we reference uh, how Carlisle may be assessed for the bus depot. So Mary, Mary, you're going to stop to be our historian when we need you. Um, Mary surfaced a 2012 uh, letter from Carlisle as the bus depot was still being talked on and considered. And um, all I, again, wanted to do was a placeholder. Here, Here past that. Oh, I have it. Sorry. That's where I distributed. Jared probably didn't count me. I kept it. That's right, I have it. Got it. Again, my only goal here was to get it on the radar. We've said in public in other <coughs> forums that we would have some conversation about it. Um, so that is why I put it we, when I met with Bob and Joanna is always there too, as the other chair. We decided we at least put it out for the committee to not have lost track of it. Um, I think there's a lot to talk on here, and I think we need to go slow and carefully, and there's legal and logistics and political and all sorts of components to this. Um, and I know 
Carlisle's very interested. Melissa's already emailed me to be sure she could be part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. I assume we would need some concrete representation. Um, there's no simple way to come at this, so I'll just preamble the discussion. Well, so, so that can you? I guess I disagree with you because I think it is pretty simple. Oh, great! Well, I <laughs> no, I mean, walk away from that. I mean, I, I have <laughs> some of this history and yeah. been part yeah. of this, and it was so clear at the time. I mean, this was Carlisle saying. Um, you know, we don't know if it was all this outsourcing, this bus yep. outsourcing discussion, yep. Yep. and Carlisle said, we've been outsourcing for years, we don't have a problem wow. with it. If, if you want to keep your buses in-house and build a, a facility, that's fine, but we don't want to pay for it. And Concord builds a bus depot. And, and Carlisle will pay, or has been paying its fair share through the assessment at the high school. So, I mean, that, that's completely oversimplifying, but, but in my mind, that's the history of it. And so now, uh, now the town of Concord says, we want you to pay for some of this beyond the operating costs? No. Oh, no, no, I think it's just... So let me understand. So can you remind what's, us what's getting charged to whom at the bus depot? Uh, yes. Um, so we split the costs. Um, so all of the bus drivers for operating costs, operating costs. Yes. of all the depot. In the Don't worry about the drivers. I guess I'm confused by the question. I'm sorry. The, uh, How are we paying the bills? Who's paying the bills at the depot? Um, if it's for the region, it would be through um, Congress charges. Yeah. My interpretation through all the questions has been that. Concord's paying a lot of the bills over there. Yeah. 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 Unlike when we were in the, can you check that memo so yeah. you're saying the right thing? Yeah. The met, uh, when we were in Acton, for example, we were paying the bills because they were charged over to the original assessment. I don't know that that's the case right now, which is why this has come up. Oh. The people have. I think that's, we're going to double check that while we sit here, but that has been the complicating factor. So the talk that I had about a year ago, very anecdotally, so again, this is why I put it, this is why we didn't rush to put this on, was, was there an assessment method for the cost of the depot even to be covered? And then it got complicated because it's Concord going to charge itself. For its portion. Right. Wasn't it, so I that thought that Concord or the, or the, was charging either the region or Carlisle almost a, I think there was discussion. Of that. Mm -hmm. No, see, that's not in place. No, this no, memo. So yeah, that's news. Right? That's, that's I thought folklore there was at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> because, this, but this explains why we, we, it's come up that way. Yeah. This memo right. in the third paragraph identifies this. Right. It says we'd recommend that an operations charge be allocated. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. That's what. It doesn't sound like there's an issue as far as. Right. Well, that's oh, what I'm saying. It's kind of simple. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. Well, so just have to yeah, figure right. out. Right. Me, yeah. This yeah. allows for an operations charge. It just, exactly. So it's just We're realizing that, that, that doesn't think. exist. It just right. doesn't happen. So, that that then is. Is. so your bus depot is not part of your education costs. It's not part of our budget. No. But Mary, your working assumption is that there has been uh, yeah. some, some costs that uh, have been yeah. put sure. into the ratio. So I, I'm not sure we should. Uh, rush to figure out detail. I don't no, think I don't we can think so. get the detail we need uh, right now. Oh, uh, not tonight. Yeah, it's, it's just one of the yeah, no, we're just confirming that let's just what ask we're what is so right now. Let's right. start there. Oh, yeah, I've got yeah. to know the yeah. facts. Do a little research. Yeah. 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 So essentially, it's the transition as the depot opened, which I can speak to because I was here when we opened it. We haven't carried forward a plan on how to do what this memo says or even sort of do something comparable to when the depot was in Acton and off-site so that the region gets charged, thus Concord, or Carlisle pays the yep. portion of the assessment right. and it's a portion of that charge. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Thank you. So and we need to check the regulations on regional transportation from, the, from DESE about charges of this nature too, right? I would assume it's not a problem. It shouldn't be a problem. We did it then. Yeah. yeah. It didn't, but, right. Um, so right now, Concord's paying the whole bill. Over oh, yeah, there. Yeah. The bottom line mm -hmm. Okay. piece to warrant discussion. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, so that, that's worth looking into and figuring out what's actually happening 
and compare it back to what the plan is and take it from there. Yeah. And, and Melissa would be a good person to keep yeah. involved because yes. she, um, she has the history she has and the she's representing yeah. FEMCOM now, so right, yeah. I won't be able to do that. So yes. she'd be a good person to do that. Definitely. Cool. So we'll keep that front and center. <clears throat> okay, good. Thank you. Okay, we'll go on this. So. Next uh, item in uh, the uh, regional school committee goals, and uh, you know we went over several of these uh, when we discussed the goals for the Concord School Committee. The first three or four are very similar. Although um, they're from a different lens now, looking at them. Yeah. yeah. So I, would, I think we should look at every one anyway. Because they really are individual to each one. I mean, budget development, we... I check. Think, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no. Did Process that. Process review, check, superintendent support so and evaluation. We, can I just add, are, do sure. we think the budget subcommittee is working well? Oh, yes. Right, Wally? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, I mean, I think no. we... No, no, seriously. No, I, think, uh, I think we also learned some stuff. I mean, it was our first, really the first two years. Um, Mm -hmm. I think so. I mean, from the standpoint of participation-wise, for me it was extremely useful because I felt like I had a really clear insight into the budget and what's going on. Hopefully for everyone else, it was useful in the sense that a couple of us came back reporting about our understanding of it. Um, and Christine was, was a, an active member there, right? Yeah, I thought it was no, extremely helpful. Yeah, and uh, you know, I went to a couple of the meetings and uh, we always had attendance from the uh, FinCom, the Congress yep. FinCom, mm -hmm. and I think it really uh, addressed a lot of questions that would have otherwise taken yep. place in a different forum yep. and yep. taken more time. And right. uh, I think overall, they, they, the members of the FinCom that were there that I spoke to, they were very pleased with uh, us establishing the committee and then the transparency that was being uh, presented by the school administration was was appreciated. So <coughs> I think. It's been a very positive step yeah. that the committee has taken. Yeah. Okay. I would say we had to rotate one member a year. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, that's yep. a good point. Um, so the different every, people because I do think it's valuable to get some insight. It is, definitely. Um, that can make things clearer for everybody when we're in the full group. Yep. Mm -hmm. So superintendent support and evaluation, we basically just spoke about that. Lori, do you feel supported? <laughs> Unconditionally. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Doing our job. Thank then. you. <laughs> that is not, not go without me. My great appreciation. Okay. And strategic plan. We uh, spend a few hours on that uh, over the year. More to come when the principals bring their improvement plans and yeah, yeah, because so, yeah. good stuff. Yeah. Community engagement and communication. Uh, that's been something that uh, a couple of us have worked on for a I while. I would say over the past few weeks, we've done a lot of community yeah, engagement. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we had a very high level. Yeah, we yeah. might, no, we I, might I, have over I think what you did for these warrant articles has been fantastic. I think the only glitch that we did was that the Carlisle meeting was an add-on later. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. But, but, you know, we get a learning curve. Now. Yeah. We get a learning curve. Um, so, but I, I think that that's how we as a group should be handling dissemination of information. Mm -hmm. Because maybe they don't all come, but at least we can say we right. we did our part we as were opposed available. to yeah. saying I think just even the nobody comes. Regular reminders of the opportunity being there is a sharing of information. Even yeah. if they don't come, they're more aware of what you're talking of about. Of what the discussion right. so, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 If there if there are events around it People tend to pay attention. Whether they go to the event, they're paying attention. Yeah. And it, it's an important issue. That's right. true. There's <coughs> one item on here. I don't know if we've scheduled it. Yeah, the Boston, the Boston meeting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I was talking with Andrew this morning. We were looking at May, the evening of May 8th. Okay. So, boy, you'd make things easy if you tell me that works. <laughs> but I also need. <laughs> yeah, you don't need that would be for you, 
new folks out there too. So if we can get into Boston on the eighth. So that would be a different mm -hmm. meeting. Eight. So that's so not an actual hold on. Where are well, so eight. let me clarify my vision of this. Uh, what I had proposed, <coughs> I think, as we talked about this earlier in the fall and debriefed from when we went in last time, I would prefer. I would suggest that it's a forum and not a regular school committee meeting. Mm -hmm. I agree. Very yeah. challenging on our end with logistics. It prohibited certain war certain agenda items from being talked on because we knew the Concord people, people might yeah, and Carlisle people might not be able to attend. I think it's a forum. I think that was what was the most productive yep. and I think that's what you're trying to offer. That's so, what was valued while we were there. Right. Yeah. So um, right. that's the date Andrew offered me this morning. So if we could solidify that we can start to Say we're going to do it. It looks for me 7 p.m. at night. Evening for sure. Presumably. 6:30, 7. Yeah, I think night. earlier that, there committee. are a lot of kids that come with their parents. Is it a Carlisle School Committee? Okay, so that won't work. I don't, I don't know though. I just I, I don't know that you should hold it up for that. I can't make it. All right. So it sounds like I'll send you some other dates. <laughs> okay. Sorry. No, no, it's fine. So, so <laughs> I like to if if you're going to do a forum. Don't worry so much about having the full school committee. Yeah, you know, no, and, and try to do more than that's one right. for the year. Right. It's easy for me to say, but what are the reasons? To your point, yeah, yeah. 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 We want to well, engage with you. To your point, and this might be good for software next year. One of the reasons it's taken this long to schedule is because every time I went to Broach Andrew with a date, there was a whole series of other events already going on in Boston because all the principals were going in so much, and Andrew was doing so much. Maybe we piggyback Maybe we just on join else. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. When there's a reason they're going to come out anyway. Yeah. Yes, um, absolutely. Don't make them come out a diff another right. night just to talk about For some of them, us. they're coming way across the city. Like, it's yeah. a big yeah. event. That addresses absolutely. Your, Let's your join point. Yeah. We don't want this misunderstood as symbolism. It's, it's right. Oh, right. 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 This is, right. here it is. Yeah. Yeah. But, and the Marshall, they get a meeting. They can't talk. We can do this last year, too. Because it's not an exchange of information. It's a listening process. Right, yeah. I agree. We don't want people to feel like they're obligated to come out and talk to us. You know, come right, across town unless it's. Let me see what's planned for the rest of the school year, and maybe there's just a, a choice of events that a few of us could go along with or something. So. I think okay. that would be great. great. Idea. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, super. And, and let's see if we can plan the fall one, a yeah. fall one and a spring one yeah. for next year. You're right about so that. Great. And I yeah, just yeah. want to mention. And then if three can make it instead of seven, it's yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. I just want to mention maximize web page to improve user experience. I think that's something that, you know, can always be improved on. We did uh, a lot of We did we, make we, a we made some improvements. Yeah. Yeah. No question. But uh, I think there's still some room there. Yeah. And I would say that at the workshop in August that this might be uh, discussed and talk about maybe some details on that. I, think, I would encourage us to have Nicole Bloomfield right in the room with us. Yes. Yes. That's, yeah, that's the, a great idea. That's my reason it group. slowed down, because I was messaging back and forth. Yeah, that's silly. I, no, yeah. that's not a good use of your time. No. Well, I think you'd, you'd all be able to give her feedback, right. and she could explain why it is the way it is, and we come up with the middle ground of what you're yeah, looking for, that fits best. the structure, and much more efficient. Yeah. Yeah. So cultural competency is next, and uh, you know, we made some nice changes to uh, several policies uh, that have been working well from the last time I heard about them, right? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Well, okay. and as we heard about tonight, yeah. there's so much going on in the school. No, there really is. is yeah. It's great to see it as a real And it's coming thing. from, the initiation of all of it is now coming from many, many directions, kids, the parent groups. It's not at all just us now, which is great about it. It's, awesome. it's interesting how that all kicked off early from the Catholic discussion. Mm. Which yeah. was What's one of those wonderful things we went through. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 yes, we went through a lot together. Yes. And our Carlisle con calendar yes. conversation yes. has yes. absolutely yes. nothing yes. to do with the holidays. Nothing. It's about summer rentals. rentals. It's about summer it's camp. It's about summer rentals. Oh, great. <laughs> So, old G, we made some really good strides, yes. it looks like, and I've been to two of those meetings. There have been three by the District uh, Sustainability Committee, and, uh, you know, they, they just had a very good discussion today, and um, I'm hopeful and confident that, you know, yeah. we're going to see some results from that. Um, it's nice that that was established as we went into some of these 
meetings because people about the the paving because that yeah. was such a huge part of the conversation. It, it was nice that we didn't have to play catch up on this. No, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So the campus oversight evaluation, um, I think we did quite a bit of work there. We did it. I think we did all of these. We were yeah. waiting for the last one on the funding. Yeah. And it's an interesting thought that that committee obviously still is in existence. So, um, you know, when. I hereby resign as this We need to be, because there were two committees, right? Yes. And, and we had a campus advisory committee. That's and we gone. Had a, we had the campus oversight subcommittee of this committee. Correct. Correct. So it's yeah. a subcommittee. It is a subcommittee, but that? we haven't <laughs> dissolved it yet, so there may be some life to it going forward. <laughs> Practices and protocols, we, yeah. we basically. Uh, <laughs> we a little. I skipped one that we haven't done. Just, which one? Re regional hey, agreement. Skip right oh, over I'm regional agreement. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's not <laughs> conveniently, Bob. No, 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 no. <laughs> now, so, so we'll give you a little update because Bob was really good to tag us to not let it go. Um, we reached out to the Massachusetts Association of Regional School Committees, and through through them, we met with one representative who's done a pretty quick read of the agreement. Her initial feedback was that there might be some mass general law we gotta realign ourselves to. So we've been, Jared, not me, Jared's been reaching back out to them. Um, there's a number of le legal lawyers who work specifically on regional agreements, so we'd actually like to tap them. Um, Steve Hemmen, what's his title? Uh, Executive Director of Mars. He's very anxious to come and give us other feedback. So it's, it's sitting there, it sounds like there's some, there's going to be a point where the committee's going to have to entertain at least doing some housekeeping in the agreement. It has not been open since 1974. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Keep wearing bell bottoms. Somewhere in there. <laughs> um, so it just, it, it, if nothing else, there's going to need to be some housekeeping. Um, there are plenty of other things in there you, you can always bring up for discussion in your funding structures and how things are happening. Much more. Uh, sensitive topics typically, yeah. but uh, there, there's it was a good goal to put on because at least we're to the point of realizing that doing nothing is probably not an option. Um, so that's good. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank yeah. Bob. He's the one who didn't let that one slide. <laughs> well, Bob. I, I added it to the uh, goal, so <laughs> I figured I should. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're it. We gotta watch out for whatever problems you guys drop on us as you leave. Oh, and don't forget to do this next year. There right? will be emails. Yeah. Don't worry. There will be emails. All the things we should the do. You know what? I don't it's in the policy uh, manual. Is it on the what? It's in the of policy it manual. Is. What? The regional it's agreement. In, you asked where it is, right? Yeah. In the policy manual. Your entire agreement? It's I checked it there a couple of times. You probably do know. Yeah. You're very good at nice. searching. Yeah. Tennessee hosts the... That's interesting. One, one more goal there. That's right. Check. Check. Assessing practice and protocols. We did that. <laughs> yeah. All right, good. So, I think we're doing well on our next, goals. Next item. Yes, we are. Oh, here we go. Is the TV studio agreement. Are we there? Finally, Carla. Well, we're about to find out. <laughs> um, TV studio agreement. We did take a little hiatus from this because there was work to be done in between. I think to Carlin's point, much of that work in court, I'm going to turn this over to you in a minute, um, was around security of the high school while the community was having access to the TV studio. The document that I provided it doesn't have too many changes. Mary helped me spot a couple of little things we changed since the last reading. But in the notes I had, the biggest takeaway from the last reading was the security issue. All right. What uh, Carlin suggested is, uh, is important. Um, to the question, uh, where is that agreement uh, around security, it was, a, it was something done at the administrative level, but it was something that uh, we got to uh, participate in and observe very carefully. Um, 
And I think that's why it's not attached to the Correct. document that uh, appointed officials are going to uh, sign town and regional school district. Uh, but in short, uh, I think it'd be fair to say we have nothing but uh, uh, high marks to uh, pass on to the town because not only were they thorough, but they were very quick in uh, examining and conforming to what we consider to be uh, uh, really tight security measures at the studio. They quickly put in cameras, they quickly put in doorbells, they quickly put in policies, they quickly put in a sign. It was, uh, it was exceptionally fast. It was. Um, That's great. Uh, but not careless. I mean, it was, it was thorough. And uh, she was willing to meet. This was Kate Hodge, the assistant town manager, met with us a few times, mm -hmm. and then put in writing uh, all of the assurances that she wanted to send uh, our way that were going to be done administratively uh, on behalf of the town to assure the school. What we did on our side, uh, the schools, uh, not real sides, it was quite collaborative, was to assure the town that any town employees would be wrapped into the, uh, the communication mechanisms of the high school so that were there, let us say, some kind of crisis, uh, these folks in the studio would not be outliers because they were town employees, not school employees because security has to work yes. in a multi-directional kind of way. And uh, so um, uh, I said to, to Lori that I had every confidence um, that the school committee uh, and the school administration uh, knows that the town is going to at least meet, if not even exceed, some of our expectations mm -hmm. around uh, security. So I, I have great comfort that the agreement is OK because of the, the other agreement at the right. administrative level around security. So <coughs> Carlin, yeah. to, to your question, uh, uh, Kate Hodge's document is a public document. I don't have it with me, but I think you'll be quite quite uh, confident when you see it. And uh, we, we appreciate your concern for this. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Carlin. On to the votes? Yes. Oh. Oh, sorry. Well, do you want to make a motion and then I'll, we'll discuss it? Or do you want to talk about the specifics now? The, about the co agreement? Anything more on no, TV? No, no, no. About no, the TV, TV agreement? agreement. TV agreement. I think. If we're comfortable, we'll move on to the action items. Yeah. Is that right? That's right. Mary had, looks like Mary had. Well, do you comments. want, I, I, just, I just had one comment mm -hmm. that was outstanding mm -hmm. under the number six, the fees mm -hmm. section. The district will not assess fees, blah, blah, blah. So, so I think my edits got a little confused here because okay. it's, it's our use charges to the towns of Concord in the first sentence. My question was, I thought this was both towns, that it was so, the, the, fund, the fees from, from Concord and Carlisle's. So my understanding when I read the MOA between the towns is that it's Concord's fees and Carlisle is only tapping their fees upon use of the studio. And they get so charged Carlisle. when they mm -hmm. use it. Okay. That was my understanding. Does that sound right? Yep. <laughs> so I think it's just Concord there. So the, so, but the, the intent, so the, the district will not ex assess fees or use charges to the towns of Concord so it should be or town Carlisle? of Concord. It's already I believe it's to now. Concord. This would only reference Concord because oh, Carlisle sorry, is being assessed because that's the way they're contributing. I'm sorry. It's on a okay. per usage. Yeah, they but by, but that's by the why town, the not thing. the district. Right. Okay. Right. Sorry, and I didn't see the S crossed out there. I just What's deleted it on my master here. Thank you. for me. Yep. Thank you. Okay. 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 So thank you. No, thank you. <clears throat> on to the votes. Um, uh, can I have a motion that the Concord Carlisle School Committee votes to approve the EDCO agreement effective July 1st, 2019 to replace the agreement dated July 1st, 2017? So, so moved. moved. For both. Uh, so moved for both districts. Second for both. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 For both. For both. For both. Uh, <clears throat> I'll move that the Cocker Carl School Committee approve the TV studio agreement as discussed. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Congratulations, Lawrence. Finding us. Very satisfying. <laughs> Especially with you know, the turnover. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the CCHS trip to Denmark for April 10th to the April 17th of 2019 with the condition that a signed liability waiver is received from all participants. Second. Okay. Andy? Yeah, we have one small change. Sure. I think, Court, you had brought it to our attention. Andrea Gillis is not the name of the person at the agency. It's Andrea Fitzgerald. So, corrections nice. to that. Wow. Nice. Andrea Gillis is one of the high school teachers. Well, I was Gordon. worried we were going to lose her. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, Do we need to make um, that? Um, Go ahead. Do you want to talk through the revote thing? Yes. We do. Yeah. Oh, well, we know. We have to vote down. We have to vote down. I don't think it's a change. Is that a discussion anymore? Is it vote? So vote. Are we voting it as amended? As amended, yeah. Okay. So we need a. Well, the motion isn't amended. It's just the name. Yeah, I don't know that that's part of your vote. That's not. Oh, it's an informational piece. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. And now we're going to vote on the uh, CCRSD fiscal 20 budget, and this was necessary because we had just uh, been notified that E&D has been certified, which has to be part of the, uh, the vote uh, in the approval of the budget. And what was the figure? Uh, the figure that they certified that was $931,635, uh, which is 2.77%. We were projecting 940 around budget time. Very close, right? Yeah. I mean, obviously. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So I'll make a motion to revote the FY20 adopted budget in the amount of $34,687,733. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Can I, we do. Um, just one thing before we break up. April 4th, the, the meeting in Carlisle. Does anybody want to keep me company since I haven't done it before? Uh, so you're going okay. yeah, to. But are we covered in Concord too? I thought we were going to. We are. Uh, I don't what think What's happening? You and I were on Concord. Does anybody else? Anyone want to come with me in Concord? I can. Okay, the fourth of April. No, the fourth. That's, that's your wife's What? There's a well, there's a six thirty. <laughs> that was last night. I think. Oh, that was last night. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry <laughs> Wally. How is she? Two both at Sorry, six thirty. Oh, I uh, can't do that. Oh, that at the end of the evening. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mess you messed your up. Okay. Yeah. So that would be great. That's probably good because I can do the middle school blindfolded, but I haven't done the high school one as much. I think you'll get a trip to Carlisle and. So can I ask a question while we're just doing logistics for parts? Um, I tweaked the, the presentation based on our input session last night um, and hoping maybe to even, well, for now it's gotta be what it is, but um, tomorrow morning is a public forum, technically at 9.30, and then the next morning is a info session. Both, I'm on both, well, I mean, I'm on the, I just wanna know that we have enough people coming to, I'm happy to do them, but. Tomorrow morning I can come. Is, is the public The forum, public forum, right. And then the next really morning is an info morning. session. Right. Yeah, both I'm, at 9.30. I'm free for both, so whenever, right. if you would need me. Good, well then we'll, we'll, we'll see each other so tomorrow. So will you send that yeah. updated one? Yeah. And do I need to get talk to Jim to? He's booked to the community room for us. I'll have to get a laptop to project. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I think it's great if you go through your more about what's over there. I just don't know. It may be, Jared, that by the time I get home tonight, we'll get it. We just stick with what I sent you. Okay. All the members. Sure. That's the updated one. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I'll just confirm when I get home or sit here. Okay. Thank you. Bob, I could be here in the morning. We'll figure it out. Yeah. At least three of us. Okay. Motion to adjourn. I read. To adjourn the region, the I'm school committee. Also, I'm going to second it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With an enthusiastic second. Taking <laughs> my name, Dad. Any high-level discussion about this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not sure that we want to let her go. All She'll turn it off the mic. She'll turn it off. Aye. Oh, you had to do the mic drop, right? Yeah. <laughs>